And yeah, so sitting there and just waiting like everybody else. It's about 11 p.m. Uh, and then he watches this homeless guy just you know, get 50 cents off this dude. He immediately runs up and just starts jerking him off. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Kevin Spacey, what are you doing? So yeah, that was the last time I would uh, use a Greyhound late at night. But then I got to thinking I am kind of lonely. So, I mean, I don't know. What do you think I should be? Oh, shit, we're live. Um, hey! Hey! Uh, so what's oh, up, shit! Hey. Oh, God. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome that, to the YouTube that. Saints. We're in exile. We're in exile yeah. tonight. And that was that was totally... I mean, that was that was something I was, I was writing for um, the, a bit shoot skit, right? That, That's right. Yeah? That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, after the, after the success of things like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, which I think started out as like a Twilight fan fiction and became uh -huh. this huge, huge thing. I think I got that right. 
Uh, hmm. You might as well try and, and monetize your weird Kevin Spacey Greyhound adventure Listen, erotic I, I just, novel. You know what it was is that I heard I was sitting here one night with like multiple tabs open and over on my right screen I've got Pornhub and then I'm watching K Pax on the center screen and it was just something about the sound from that while he's in that train station. I'm like that yeah, that could be me. I mean why, uh, a great why, story. Why um, why 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 would you ever watch K Pax? <laughs> why, why not? It's oh a great movie. God. No, it's not. It's awful. It's wonderful. Movie. It's, it's a, a great movie. terrible movie. It's wholesome. It's wholesome. I got it's always wholesome. got the idea that like Kevin Spacey is sitting there and somebody hands him the script of K Pax and he's got he's like, you know, Jeff Bridges had Starman. This is gonna be my Starman. And no, no, K Pax was terrible. Anyway, what it's... I like to yeah, I like to see it as the dude just decided he had had enough of like getting by, so he went back to school and finished his degree. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, it's like you know he changed, he he took his wife's name when he got married. That's why his name isn't Doctor Lebowski in the film. But I like to think uh, of it as an in-universe sequel. You know. Okay. Okay. So so Starman is an in-universe sequel to the Big Lebowski. No, 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 no. K Pax is. Oh, K Pax. Yeah. Yeah, K-Pax is an in-universe sequel to The Big Lebowski. You heard it here first. Um, after that whole incident and having to, like, you know, like, kind of wash Donnie off of him, he said, I'm going to go finish my degree, man. And, yeah, he just uh, he got clean and had family. It was great. Wholesome. Wholesome Lebowski. That's what we're going to call that K-Pax movie from now on. So, yeah, Jeff, continue being excited because it's Sunday. Don't I, go on I, that. I, I almost want to rename the episode to Wholesome Lebowski. But anyway, beside that, uh, it is Sunday night, 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern, and that means only one thing. We're doing the YouTube Saints. But, strangely enough, we're not on our channel. Although, if you're watching this in the future, we are on our channel. This is being recorded and uploaded there. And that is because we got a strike. That's right. We have committed the egregious sin of, of hate speech, I, I guess? We were bullying. We, we were being racist, hateful bullies as we talked with, uh, as we had a stream with two Jews, an Indian guy, a woman, and um, and you. And Repsion, but I mean, there's not, what can you say about Repsion? Oh, and, and a metal fabricator, dirty fucking welders. Ooh. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it was uh, it was the episode that we did right before the Kilroy convention with Romy Millennial, Bunty King, Mr. Epsion and Rucka Rucka Ali. There's nothing hateful in it at all, but we still got a strike. It'll be cleared up by next week. It's not that big of a deal, but we are exiled. We're saints in exile, so we're on my channel tonight. Um, so that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck it. It's cool. Still wholesome Lebowskis, though. There are many wholesome Lebowskis to be had tonight. The format yeah. will be adhered as always. The format is the universal god that guides this show and tells us what needs to be done. Uh, with that being said, we've got a great show tonight. I'm actually really excited about this. We've been talking about doing this for a while with Magog. We're we're going to be hanging out with Magog unmasked. Yeah, we're going to be the, uh, the the bizarro world alter ego, whereas instead of being a wizard uh, who hates the world, he is a college uh, graduate um, working to be a functioning taxpaying entrepreneur in the world. So, yeah, he's... <laughs> He's got a similar sense of humor. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, gonna, I love it. I love it. I'm going to Andy Kaufman the living shit out of this show with him. You're goddamn right. You know, I did have it. <laughs> I thought about uh, trying to find like a wizard hood and, and trying to like do where like you and I could be. What are you doing? This fucking I'm trying to get this app working so I can watch the, the fucking chat. But it's just I awful. Thought, and... I thought it would be hilarious if you and I. We didn't have enough prep time to do it. If you and I got, like, wizard hoods and shit, and the Magog is totally out of costume, but we're wearing the Magog costumes, but we didn't we didn't have time to do it. Maybe next time. Yeah. Kind of like last time we did that wizard gag, and I, you went out and bought a wizard costume, and I decided I'd just show up in a suit and call myself a Malfoy. <laughs> that <laughs> that was a good time. That, that was not That was not very funny. It was to me in the audience. It I was mean, humiliating! What? Yeah, and the beard. Don't forget how badly the beard itched. It was, it was uncomfortable too. It was. It was actual agony. It was actually agony. It was terrible. Uh, I thought you were gonna fight that beard by the end of the night. <laughs> I felt like I wanted to. I felt like I wanted to. Uh, so starting off tonight, real quick before we get into any of our uh, news items, real quick, we had our good buddy Ben Mills. What's going on, Ben? Uh, hey, said, did Richard Spencer do the strike from all that diversity? Probably not. Let's 
I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Richard Spencer gives a shit enough about us enough to actually watch our show. Not really. No, but no, but I mean, like you know, there could have been some smaller, you know, smaller hardcore fanboy out there who's like, how dare they let roaming millennial, that beautiful pure white woman, get that close to a brown man? Dude, she's part Chinese. No, she's not. No, yeah, so it'd be you know, Don't it's a good tell him. For. Yeah. Nobody tell him. Man. Nobody tell him. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, that being said, let's get to let's get to the news. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Kind of a kind of a really big week in in the news, as I learned this um, well this afternoon when I uh, decided to take a look at the news for the first time this week. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, from NPR actually, by way of uh, Google News, uh, Saudi women's activists arrested ahead of driving ban. So they're um, they, you know they're 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 going out and arresting women before they're able to even drive, uh, keeping the streets of Riyadh safe. Uh, at least six prominent defenders of women's rights in Saudi Arabia were detained this week, six weeks before the kingdom's ban on women from driving is due to be lifted June 24th. Wait, it's a fucking, re- like, they just can't, like, even wait. They're like, well, it's not going to matter, but fuck it, we gotta get, we gotta beat some bitches with sticks after all. We are, we are carrying out justice in the name of Allah. Activist uh, Lujain al Hathul Hathul was arrested at her home on Tuesday evening, according to Amnesty International. She Racist. campaigned against the de- she campaigned against the uh, decades old driving ban and ranked number three in a list of the most powerful Arab women for her work. Amnesty International named three other women who were detained as uh, Iman al Nafjan, who became widely known for her activism. Aziza Al Youssef, a fellow leader in the campaign to drive, and Aisha Al Mania, 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 uh, who campaigned for women's rights to drive since the early 90s. She is a 70 year old who survived a heart attack last year, according to Australian based Saudi activist Manal Al Sharif. Uh, just uh, to, the, to the Saudi authorities, good job. I, I hope you brought enough guys. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> it was unclear why the activists were arrested. Really? It, it's not the, the, the backwards as fuck government and it's, the overbearing police forces? It's, it's, it's a whole lack of penis thing. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And the fact that, like, these guys are like, you, you, you made it uh, you know, legal for women to drive soon, so I'm going to arrest you for something that you made legal. That's a, it's a fucking healthy democratic process. We have the best allies, don't we? Oh, yeah. we do. We do. I think, you know, I, I think after them defending their streets this way, we should send them another uh, a pack of uh, F-18s or something like that. Just as a just as a good job, guys, a little a little uh, attaboy for the uh, for the kingdom. Uh, two men were also taken into custody by Saudi authorities in their apparent sweep. Ibrahim al-Modemi. Modemi. I think so. <laughs> a lawyer. In... No, it's Modemi. But I mean, it's the GH is some kind of silent, right? Anyway, he was a lawyer and a women's rights advocate. Um, and Mohammed Al uh, Rabia, a youth activist who started a literary salon for young men and women in Riyadh. Th- th- you see, this is the kind of thing Jordan Peterson is talking about. Like, you know, we're just going too fast into the into into the wild world of liberalism and progressivism here. Uh, you know, we got to take a page from them because this guy was trying to set up a library. Oh, sorry, a literary salon. The fuck is a literary salon? I mean, I like the sound of it. I like I the sound of it too. Absolutely. Like, if if there's if you're in a totalitarian government, there's an oppressive regime. You know, they they actually have a real instance of of systemic patriarchy, uh, and they're like, yeah, you know, uh, women. Uh, ooh, we don't really want them going to those library things. Well, that's that's fine. It's a what, what do they call it? A book salon. A, li- a literary Lit- salon. A literary salon. No, 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 husband. I am not going to the library. I'm going to the literary salon. Oh, like, what do you get your hair done? That's great. You go, go do your how, thing. How, how, how are you going to get there? I, I'm going to drive. No, uh, fuck no, bitch. No, you're not driving. <laughs> No. Yeah, so uh, at midnight on Saturday, a smear campaign began, said Amnesty. Six activists, believed to be the same ones who were arrested, and another individual were accused in the state media of forming a cell that threatened Saudi security. Oh, my God. Literate women who can drive. It's not like you guys state-sponsor fucking terrorism all over the goddamn planet and expect us to turn a blind eye because you got all that oil and nothing else going for you, you nah, backwards nah, fucks. Nah, the, the, real, the, real, anyway. the real danger to society is women who can read and get to work. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think they're it has to, work, to stop! 
It has to stop. <laughs> it has to stop. It's not right. Ugh. Amnesty I, like, International I, I, ought to be. I, I, this... They ought to. They ought to spearhead a campaign for like the poor nation of Saudi Arabia who are just being trampled under all of this toxic feminism. This. This is my suggestion for anybody out there. And don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying this to try and disparage on all of the social issues that people are facing in the world, whether there is systemic sexism or there isn't or whatever. It's a very confusing, complicated issue. But really, if you're in the West and you find yourself aggressively getting pissed off about something that's basically minutia and you're really losing perspective, go and look at the absolute goofy shit that happens with Saudi Arabia. And they're finally starting to get it, so you can actually see it happening in real time. You can see it happening in real time, and you'll feel a whole lot better about where we're at. Does that mean that we don't need to go further? No. But you'll feel better. You'll feel a lot better. Yeah, because, I mean, this goes on to say activists were alleged to have contact, and this is a quote, contact with foreign entities with the aim of undermining the country's stability and social fabric, according to the organization. A hashtag, agent of embassies, and a graphic featuring the activist faces spread on social media. Can't even find Some, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I, I love that. It's like they're in contact with foreign entities, um, mainly Simon & Schuster and Toyota. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Pen- <laughs> penguin, the- penguin books is a subversive element in Saudi culture. Mother <laughs> fucking penguin books always trying. <laughs> I mean, like you know, th- I heard they were responsible for the installation of Shah Pahlavi in Iran back in the you know, back in the fifties. There, mm-hmm. those fucking booksellers. We got to we got to start burning those things. That's right. Uh, Sama Hadid, Amnesty International's Middle East director of campaigns, said in a written statement, "This chilling smear campaign is an extremely worrying development for women." Uh, human rights defenders and activists in Saudi Arabia. Such blatant intimidation tactics are entirely unjustifiable. Uh, Sarah Lee Whitson, uh, Whitson, Middle East Director of Human Rights Watch, said Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam's reform campaign is a frenzy of fear. She added then, the message is clear that anyone expressing skepticism about the Crown Prince's rights agenda faces time in jail. Other hmm. activists feared to be detained, and some have been banned by the government from traveling overseas, the AP reported. The Saudi embassy did not respond to requests for comment. Okay, all right, all right. So let, let, let's wrap this one up, because otherwise I, I have so much to say at this. I think we could do, like, a good <laughs> hour on this fucking thing. Um, yep. And then they and then the Saudi uh, the Saudi investors in uh, Google would probably force Susan's arm to have us uh, kicked off yet another channel. Another strike. Hey, let's not do that. No, no, no. Let's not. It's cool. Um, it, this reminds me a lot of like when uh, when weed was getting de uh, deregulated, not deregulated, Decriminal, but like decriminalized. decriminalized, decriminalized here in Oregon. Uh, there was a couple of stories of people, for the most part, the cops in Oregon are pretty chill, but there are some places that they are not chill. And for the few weeks leading up to when it was fully uh, decriminalized, there were people who were getting popped with possession, and their reaction was always, really? 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 And, and I, this, is, this, is even, this is even more nutty than that. This is absolutely ridiculous. Because if I'm not mistaken, these women actually do have driver's licenses. Yeah, and now it's uh, now so the 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 official ban is to come down on the 24th. Okay. And the the funny thing is, nowhere in that, um, nowhere in the article, nowhere in the story, they weren't even detained or arrested for driving. <laughs> they were waiting legally for the law to change, and then they would drive. And instead, they were detained because they were uh, in contact with secret foreign agents who were trying to undermine the fabric of their country. You know, it's always funny because you, it, you one time, anyway, you if you ever want to like be able to spot an absolute crackpot ideology or regime, mm-hmm. watch how frequently they refer to uh, spooky foreign threats who are subverting their cultures and shit. It's a it's right. a pretty telling thing. You can pretty much it's one of those great like smells like authoritarianism. Hmm. Who would have guessed? Yeah. But uh yeah, pretty pretty fucking it's it's an obscene country. It's an obscene world and I for one um just want to wish the best of luck to um the Saudi authorities in preventing women from driving. That's the <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, and no, demonetize. All right. So anyway, um, real quick, a few super chats. We got uh, mysterious senior Hitler. Man, every time you 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 super chat me, I'm very thankful. I'm very grateful. But I'm like, I gotta read that name, and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, Jeff saw the trailer for the Jillian episode of Doctor Phil. All I have to say is, nice man bun. I know, man. I know. Uh, for some of those who are not aware, I will be making my daytime television appearance on Tuesday on the Dr. Phil show, uh, going up against Jillian Epperly, and I look fat! I look so fat! I look so super fat with a man bun, and I, they made me <laughs> shave my beard down to this, like, little, little douchey thing, and I'm just, I look so terrible. It's so gross. Jet Jetty Lee did say, uh, when we were hanging out today, that he was hoping I'd find some way to fit an Al Borland reference in, but I told them those are pretty much reserved for Sargon. So, Thank you. Sorry, Jetty. I appreciate that. There were a few people who were who were sending me Al Borland images on Twitter. I thought, yeah, it was, no, I thought I it mean, was funny. Well, well, no, I mean, like you know, you're my co-host, and I know this show matters as much to you as it does to me, especially since Tool Time went under. So, you know. <laughs> Rhino, Rhino says, can't wait for all Jeff's haters to start a Jilly Juice regimen out of spite. Donate to Wizard <laughs> and Anahata's GoFundMe to go to VidCon. That would be pretty yeah, that's funny. Right. Oh, man, no, I'm, I'm all about it because, you know, I'd love to see people start slamming Jilly Juice on the daily to own the libs, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude, no, by all means, all, all of you, uh, all of you fashy ethno satyrs out there who are all about, you know, my white supremacy, by all means, start chugging that Jilly Juice. Really show me what's show you know, me what's what. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jeff, I mean, like you got you guys know you can't really trust Jeff because he's, you know, just the total cuck and shit. What you don't know about Jilly Juice is it actually finds all of that white DNA inside of you and it double binds it. So you're twice as white, kind of <laughs> like me under these lights. So cheers and drink up, fellas. You're supposed to because I do mostly science on my channel. When we're on my channel, you should call me a shill instead of a cuck. It, it plays well, better. That, yeah, but yeah, but I mean, if I did that, then I might not have a deal to get in some with some of that sweet, sweet Monsanto money you're always getting. So that's true. That's true. I did put in uh, a good word for you, Mister Captain Snack says I'm a relatively new sub of Jeff's. I hadn't realized he had a podcast-ish show. This is great, guys. Hey, welcome, man. Welcome. Uh, link to the channel is in the description. Uh, uh -oh. It's very, it's very different from what one I do. One of us is frozen. Uh, I hope one of us is still active. You're frozen. I hope it's not just me. You're frozen. Frozen. Okay, now you're I hope back. Jeff's internet didn't go down. No, no, no. You're fine. You're back. Let's find out. Can you not hear me? I don't think he can hmm. hear me. Can you hear me? I don't think he can Curious. hear me. Curious. That's really funny. Wait, he'll catch on. He'll catch on. Wait, wait, wait. We're breaking the fourth wall and realizing that we're actually not in the same. Oh, no. Hey, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Ah, oh, crap. Hang on. I don't know what happened with that. We're breaking the fourth wall and people are people are suddenly going to realize that we're actually not in the same room. Sorry, no, listen, I mean, you know I've got a condition where I periodically like, you know, experience muscle <laughs> spasms. I freeze up and I disappear. It happens. Do you suffer from symptoms of mesothelioma? <laughs> have, have you periodically frozen in place and then disappeared inexplicably before arriving just off camera? Anyway, you <laughs> talk to your doctor about chili juice. But what I was what I was gonna say is, uh, yeah, we do have a podcast show. It's very different from the regular types of videos that I do. It's more of a late night show. We're a little crass. We're we're a little edgy and whatnot. But if you like what we do tonight, by all means, please go and sub to the other channel. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll be we'll be back there someday. <laughs> uh, yeah, as as soon as we can, like finagle our way back over uh let's do our second news article here all right royal wedding 2018 couple leave windsor after wedding you guys knew we had to cover this it's the big big news of the day everybody knows about it uh there was officially the newly married duke and duchess of sussex have left windsor castle as a couple's royal wedding celebration celebrations come to a close the couple stayed at the castle on saturday after an evening reception with 200 of their friends and family hosted by prince charles um i my 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 reaction to this ultimately came down to very very simply i hear that there were some people that got married good for them mazel tov. i'm so sorry let's so let us all take a moment to mourn the sex life of britain's most powerful ginger. Well, second most powerful. It's true. 
It's true. <laughs> there were a lot of people who wanted to express their feelings and emotions about the royal wedding today. Um, uh, mostly it was people wanting to just enjoy that it was happening. Uh, I don't give a fuck about royalty. It doesn't matter what country it is. I don't give a shit. But a yeah. highly publicized wedding, and they look like they're happy, so I'm happy for them. However, there was one bit of controversy about this wedding. And quite a big bit of controversy with some people who were super mad. They got super, super mad. Oh, was it because everyone found out how that Katie Hopkins is actually only in her 40s? <laughs> uh, what, who is Katie Hopkins, anyway? She's a spicy British conservative person, news, um, news commentator you know, she, or something. Uh, she, she's, yeah, she says she says lots of shit about Muslims and all that. You know, she's yeah, you know, she, she, boilerplate. She threw a bunch of shade at how basically the wedding wasn't very glamorous. Uh, when she looks like a tire, oh, that that's was, that was actually the, the the thing you were gonna bring up. No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. No. All right, sorry. Continue. No, 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 no. Yeah, she... she, but she looks like a tire that's been driven on for the past fifteen years. Um, but no, the no, thing... she just no, she just looks like a very, very well worn kind of sun bleached stretch Armstrong. That's all. She does. She does. Yeah. Uh, no, but what I was going to bring up was the new the new Duchess. She is of mixed race, and there were some people who had a very big problem with this. Um, to which I can only reply. Uh, are you unfamiliar with how interbred royal families have been throughout history? This is probably a fucking good thing. Just yeah. say it. Yeah. Um, Just say it. You know, you can only you can only have one root system for so many, you know, for a handful of trees that keeps interlocking before something bad happens, at least to humans. Uh, furthermore, uh, why um, does anyone uh, give the slightest of fucks? Um what the ethnicity of a British duchess married into the royal family even is. I mean, it's hard for me to really fathom the sorts of, like, you know, hysteria. I mean, outside of Britain, perhaps, uh, for this royal wedding business. Um, you, if, if you're planning on getting married, your wedding will never be that. It will never, ever be that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, get used to get, wrap your head around that. And then furthermore, it's like, oh, my God, we're upset because she's, she's, she's of mixed race. It's like, guess what? So are you probably? <laughs> probably, yeah. Take yeah. take your twenty three and me uh, test and and man the fuck up about it. Yeah, uh, and if you're not, that's I mean, if if you're not, I mean, honestly, those. I mean, it's like we say we've seen what happens when these uh, when these when these sorts of uh, pu you know purity tests for genetic lines happen. It it doesn't work out like it does in Dune. I can tell you that. Never does. Yeah. Never does. It's 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 not like Game of Thrones. In fact, Game of Thrones even pointed out that enough of that, and you end up with uh, with lunatics and um, and the disabled. Instead, I think we we should just basically take the most humanitarian thing we could possibly say, which is uh, congratulations to the happy couple. Nobody gives a shit what your fucking races are. Uh, we we wish you well and good luck maintaining a healthy sexual relationship. Yep. Also, uh, Britain. Seriously, I mean, like you guys are kind of strapped for cash. Maybe it's time to ditch the monarchy. They kind of cost you a lot of money and they don't do anything. They cost them a lot of money. Oh my god. Yeah. Holy. I will shit. say that. Can I say this though? I mean, in in, in this is a positive thing. Mm. Um, just. Real quick, I will say that, I mean, even though they've been bred to be this, even though they have never had a choice in who and what they would become, mm -hmm. uh, th these two princes of England, yeah, they they seem like some pretty baller individuals. I mean, you've got the, what, the older one there, William, and right. he was like a rescue right. pilot. That's just, I don't care who you are, that's badass. That's badass, dude, and, yeah. Yeah, and then to see, like, and then to see that it, it's almost like it was scripted, a turnaround on the younger Harry Ginger kid there. Uh, he goes from like like kind of edgy royal teen, which really like to, if it wasn't royalty, it wouldn't even be edgy. But he goes from that and he becomes a fucking uh, R, what is it RAF pilot? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's that and there's a badass clip. I mean, I've seen it on Twitter a bunch. It's pretty badass. He's sitting giving an interview, and then all of a sudden he's like seeing people running, and he's like, oh shit. Gets up, just dash, <laughs> dashes off to what was it, like an Apache helicopter, and then just went and like nuked out some Taliban and shit. Like yep. you know what? That's what fucking royalty ought to be doing. None of this, none of this Saudi horseshit. Like I will drive around in my in my Mercedes Benz throwing hand grenades at camels. Ha <laughs> ha! I am prince. Yeah. They no no they no they do that. My brother uh, my brother went to school with like some cousin some like far flung cousin of Saudi royalty, and he was talking about uh, yeah they just take Mercedes out in the desert and. Uh, blow shit up with hand grenades. Right, They're rednecks, right. basically. The royal, yeah. the royal family of Saudi Arabia are Arab rednecks. 
You're welcome. Uh, ba- basically, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the one oh. thing that I do did, did want to mention, uh, Dragon's Armory in the chat says, dude, uh, Prince Philip Harry's granddad was literally descended from Pushkin's daughter. Pushkin was a mixed race Russian black poet whose granddad was from West Africa. That's cool. That's totally great. I that that just shows my ignorance on the whole thing about like uh, uh, you know English royalty. I really don't know anything about it. Uh, it seems it like that, it seems it also shows the, the the ignorance of those people who are like pimping out those. We are beautiful Europeans, and they're muddying our bloodlines. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it just uh, that's cool though. It seems like they did actually get away from the the interbreedingness of some of their their royal line before. But one thing I did want to bring up too, talking about badass royals, we get a shout out here to uh, uh, King Abdullah of Jordan, the badass yeah. motherfucker who not only uh, did a cameo in Star Trek, uh, but got so pissed <laughs> off when uh, what was it? Was it? It was ISIS. ISIS fucked up one yeah. of his pilots, and he went and was in the plane and helped carpet he bomb. Flew. He flew the fucking plane. He's a pilot. I don't know if he. I don't think he actually flew. I th- but he was. He was in the plane. He was in it. But yeah, badass, well, super badass. See, this is the thing we need. I mean, if we're going to maintain any kind of monarchies in this day and age, like if they're if your country's going to war, I want you to take whatever the equivalent is of a horse in these days and be at the very front. So, if, like, you're going to start with airstrikes. I want your king flying the bomber that's in the front of the formation yeah. and maybe raising a sword. And then the actual pilot's like, no, no, put the sword down, sit back down, please, put seatbelt on, please, please. Right. <laughs> uh, let's catch up with Streamlabs really quick, and then we gotta we gotta burn through this last uh, story before we get to Magog because we're we're already late. Uh, that's all my fault, by the way, everybody. Anime Moon says, hoping I got the right one. Doing this on my phone because Google wants my ID. Fuck that shit. The format format must be appeased <laughs> with blackjack, anime titties, and the steelest of panther cummies served in Jonathan Davis styrofoam cups. God damn it. <laughs> that was a that was fucking artwork. That was that was amazing. Uh, for those who aren't aware, that are not familiar with the show, because you're watching it from my regular <laughs> channel. Uh, I you used... all you all learn just let you all just learn Jeff's phobias all at once, pretty much. I, uh, Break that sentence down. You got them all. I used to look like Jonathan Davis from Corn. I hate the sound of styrofoam. The band Steel Panther makes me really really upset. Next thing next thing you know, everybody's gonna be fucking throwing money at me, so I have to drink this goddamn fire water. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, yeah, and that's that's been a year, and and, and if you're not uh, familiar too, uh, f- uh, for every combined fifty dollars that is announced towards it, and it has to be announced, it's not just every fifty bucks. We we should make that rule just for the sake of you continuing, because oh. I can't. Well, I, I could carry the show, oh, but no. I'd rather not. Uh oh, it just happened. Yeah, it did. Now keep uh, yeah. keep well, keep announcing it. Was, it. Yes. Keep announcing so it. when it's announced, when it's announced, the way it works is that Jeff uh, Jeff ends up having to take a, a shot of what we call a death. And uh, again, this is for the new people here. Uh, this is a uh, spiritus of ignia. Says 100 percent grain alcohol, uh, product of Poland, and it is flammable. I have tried it, and it burns like paint thinner for about 20 minutes or so, and then it hits your brain, and everything gets worse. So. All right, uh, catching up on the Streamlabs. Dreda Bell says, when do we get hashtag Daddy Buddha again? We'll have Mouthy Buddha on at some point. He's he's a great dude. We get along with John really well. Uh, Jabel says, and this is $50 through Super Chat, this is for Jonathan Davis to take a death shot to be able to listen to Steel Panther while thinking of cummies and two pieces of styrofoam rubbing together. Motherfucker. Okay, well, that's one death shot that I have to take. Nick, I didn't you... actually know. I didn't actually know what he was saying there. I was kind of following along, lip syncing to Jeff. But uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you're gonna have to read the next article while I take this because I'm about to fucking die. Yeah. So... I picked this one. I picked this one, and like you know, usually like I try not to lead off on a downer, but we had to cover it, and I found this one too, and I figured it was worth bringing up. So uh, we all know about the the school shooting which happened in Texas. Yet an, oh, well, yet another one we get in. Uh, here in the good old U.S., uh, another loner kid, uh, you know, sort of trench coat mafia motherfucker, uh, went in with a, what I hear, what I believe was a shotgun and a revolver, and uh, gun down, uh, well, killed ten of his peers, killed ten people, and injured, I believe, about ten or dozen more. Texas Lieutenant Governor blames abortions and violent video games for school shootings. Now, in case these 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 simpering fucknuts didn't learn from Jack Thompson or Anita Sarkeesian, I don't think this is going to work out too well, but. Uh, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick on Sunday said school shootings aren't happening because of an issue with guns. 
Rather, he blamed the tragedies on a litany of reasons, including abortions and violent video games. So this is basically like, well, they don't think like I do. Not enough people do. Uh, and that's why your kids are shooting each other. Now, you see what, what I mean? Uh, it, he's, not acting. He's, he's not acting either. He's not hamming it up. But uh, you can ask people in the chat. There's some here who watch me do it. It's that bad. Right? Some here have actually done it. It is that bad. Uh Patrick praised Governor Greg Abbott's plan for a roundtable discussion on how to protect students from gun violence after the nation's latest school shooting in Santa Fe, where 10 people were killed. Quote, everything ought to be on the table, Patrick said. Uh, here's what Patrick attributed to school shootings. Violent video games. The video game issue we have got to address in this country. Based on all research we have done, 97%, according to psychologists and psychiatrists, of teenagers who view video games, and 85% of those who, who uh, of those video games are violent. And and what are these games showing you how to do? Kill people. The vast majority of psychologists and psychiatrists will tell you that it will tell you it leads them to become numb to violence, to have less empathy to their victims, and to be more aggressive. Does that impact everyone who views them? No, but it's obviously part of the problem. Dickhead. Sorry. <laughs> I'm old school Gamergate in this sense. And um, yeah, we've been through this before. I don't know how many times we're going to have to go over, go through this. But no, video games do not cause violence. Removing religion from school. Yeah, because religious people never fucking kill anybody, do they? We have devalued the life in this country. We threw God out of school. Abortions and broken families. Why does he have to be half fucking right with this? We have 50 million abortions. Those are that none of those are school shooters, dude. None. Uh, we have families that are broken <laughs> apart. No fuck? fathers at home. What? It's true. Not it's a single aborted fetus has ever become a school shooter. One. Find me one. I dare you. Um... We have incredible heinous violence as a oh, uh, as a video game. There we go. Back to video games. Two hours a day in front of their eyes, and we stand here and wonder why this happens to certain students in a in, in a state that's flooded with poorly regulated guns and kids who are largely left with their own devices because their parents are made to work too much, even if there are two of them at home, so they can't be there to actually educate, supervise the child, and explain to them why violence is bad or talk to them about the kind of shit to make them want to kill their peers. That's not him. I was just paraphrasing what he probably forgot to say. Irresponsible gun owners. There you go. I'm a gun owner. Many of you are gun owners. I am. Jeff is. We have a responsibility to be sure our guns are safe at home, which we do. But teenagers are craftier than we give them credit for. That's where gun control starts, at home. Your guns ought to be safe at home. I agree. And too many entrances at schools. Yeah, because, you know, when a fire breaks out, you want there to be one or two main things in which a bunch of frantic and panicked fucking teenagers are trying to cram themselves through because who gives a fuck about fire codes god if you just put god back in he'll put the doors in when you need them yeah <laughs> so yeah oh and he also he also said the last one was unarmed teachers yeah because an untrained educator and because we've all probably known teachers you know they're they're super big on uh you know on being tactical ready to just kill at all any moment yeah the, we just need a whole bunch of them there yeah why do school shootings happen? Why, why, why? Why do school shootings happen? Everybody asks that question every goddamn time. Is it because it's too easy to get the guns? Is it because uh, parents aren't paying enough attention to the kids? Is it because of violent video games? A culture of fucking violence? Is it because of this? Is it because of that? Is it because of this? Is it because of that? This, these types of arguments dumb down the entire conversation. This is dog shit. You dehumanize the very real element. If you want to understand why somebody decided to snap and shoot up their fucking school, you need to analyze the person themselves. And then, once you can understand why they did it, you can try and find patterns of behavior, and therefore you can have a predictive measure to see what's going on. Now, by doing this, having a preventative measure is not necessarily to try and police somebody's thoughts, police somebody's beliefs, or, or, or even try to shame somebody because they might be an outlier, or a loner, or somebody who just doesn't seem to fit in. Instead, we should be using these things to build a support structure, to be able to find a way to support kids who are lacking in some way, who are in pain in some way. Being a kid is fucking shitty. It's terrible. High school was the worst fucking point in my life. It was awful. It was absolutely terrible. But if I had known that after, I, after high school, I had literally hit the lowest part of my life and everything was going to get better afterwards, I probably would have had an easier fucking time. We don't have nearly enough 
proactive fucking messages towards kids to try and support them through the absolute agony and shit show hellscape that is fucking modern education in our American fucking high schools to try and help and support them as people, let alone whether or not they're going to shoot up a fucking school or not. It should just be for the sake of the fact that they're still human beings who are developing and we need to have empathy and we need to have support. We need to be able to do these types of fucking things. Otherwise, we're shooting ourselves in the fucking foot anyway. We and have... Then once and then we can, you know, we can't even limp to assist the people who are getting shot in schools while we do it. That's exactly right. The The whole thing is so fucking sick. It's mentally fucking sick to try and address these things in the way that we do. We just demonize this, demonize that. That's why the kid shot up the school. Let's blame it on this. Let's blame it on that. Nobody wants to paint the actual portrait of what is fucking going on, which is... These these kids are in trouble. They they are fucked in some way. You cannot say that they're just mentally ill. You can't. You can't. Because and I will you can't get... say it's because they're playing too many video games and not spending enough time in church either. Agreed. It's it, and this it, it's a sad thing with it too, right? Uh, after Columbine, I was in high school during Columbine. In fact, I was the guy everyone was looking at during Columbine. Fascinating thing. <laughs> Me like, too. Yeah, so with that, when Columbine happened, the entire nation was, like, stunned and horrified, and, like, the, the, they did the worst thing possible with the zero-tolerance policy, hey, let's turn high schools into prisons, hey, why are the dropout rates spiking kind of thing. Yeah. But even with that, I would almost uh. take that, 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 that frozen-in-time horror that we all felt when we saw that shit happen over this sort of mundane, like, and you see it on Twitter all the goddamn time, mass shooting of any kind. First thing, half of the Cretans out there want to know, ooh, what's the fucking race and religion of them? Ooh, what, can, this, can I make this work to my advantage? And then when it comes out one way or another that you can't, if it turns out that you can't say that it was, you know, toxic masculinity or white supremacy that caused the shooting, well, then you see you blame it on guns. But if you can't say that it was radical Islam and these invader oh. darkies, well, then you blame it You blame it on a lack of Jesus and shit or violent video games or anything you can. And using... Using the dead bodies of young people as political footballs is perhaps one of the most disgusting thing an individual can do, and everybody knows it. And yet we we are we are so you talk about desensitized to violence via violent video games. I think we're desensitized to violence because we're constantly hearing reports of heinous violent acts going on on such a regular basis that we figure, hey, we might as well make hay while the sun shines and use it to cram my shit bag point down someone's throat. <laughs> so. All right, all right. I think I think you and I both because we're both really passionate about this shit, really fucking passionate. I think we both have to like take a step off the soapbox. Yeah, let's 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 get our let's get our buddy in. Let's get let's get Bizarro World Magog in here. Let me make sure we're all caught up real quick. I I haven't looked actually. I was just like I was dude. I got heated. I got heated. I was oh, yeah. No, I was sitting. No, I was sitting there. I was mm. like, go do it. Go get it. Get it, son. Get big, it. Big Assassin 80, uh, five bucks towards the death shot. Motherfucker, goddammit. Uh, Bard 2 says, People with too much pride on their family tree shudder when they find the colored people on it are ancestors rather than noose ornaments. Jilly juice to unlock is the superior shed mail. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> indeed. No, it's, it's a very common thing I, when, when people I feel just, I, like... I just love the way that was phrased. I do, too. <laughs> I do, too. Yeah. And people are like, well, I come from very proud uh, white ethnic stock. And then you do a 23 and me, and you're like, Oh, wow. A lot, 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 lot of white people in Ethiopia, are there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dylan, R, uh, Dylan R. N. Crab says, I don't like the idea of one person having absolute political power, although liberal democracies may not be much better. After all, we Americans did just elect a reality TV celebrity for president. That's true. We did. For better or worse, this is where we're at, man. This is where we're at. Let's get... Let's it's, almost get like, uh... it's almost like we're coming up with it as we go along and we're not naturally good at it. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that isn't that yeah yeah mm. all right let's get magog i i did not yeah. i did not prep uh the the video we're just gonna pull him in no oh yeah no that was that wasn't we didn't even have a video because i mean anybody here i'm pretty sure you guys know magog at this point and if you don't there's links down in the description so go and check him out better know magog if you don't know magog then what's wrong with you everybody welcome 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 jeremy the man behind magog how's it going buddy hey hey what's going on uh, I feel like my insides are liquefying from, uh, from drinking gasoline. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely <laughs> terrible. I don't know how we, how we came up with this fucking idea either. It was the worst. Idea. I think, oh no, it was cause people started paying. Like, I think I remember if I remember, like it started out when like people would just like any super chat says death shot. That was like over five bucks you were down for. 
And then like I'm like, uh, and then we kind of agreed like let's let's push that up to like a reasonable limit so that you don't have to take as many and so that if you do at least we make out all right for it. Right, right, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, okay. No amount of money is is worth is worth drinking shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, my my dignity is for sale for the right price. Yeah, but... you've been on this show before, dude. You know, dignity is not a very big thing here. It's not our hottest. No, thing. no, no. I, I, I mean, <laughs> that's also why I'm here. You know? Yeah, we're we're all on YouTube. You know, <laughs> we, we 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 checked the we we checked those bags a I, while I, back. Yeah. I checked my dignity at the door the moment I decided to create Magog. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So I've I've always wanted to ask you about this, like as as once we, when we finally got around, because we've been talking about doing a show with you outside of the Magog character for a while. Uh, yes. I, I've I've always been curious, like what what really was like the big inspiration, the big impetus to make Magog. Um, that's a complicated question to answer because there were like stages, mm-hmm. you know. Like first, it started off as a joke, like. Me and my friends were talking one night and it was like, one of us should join the YouTube. Like, we always have these things to say because we're watching everything, you know, we're watching all the stuff and all the people that we like and all the content creators. And it's like, why aren't one, why isn't one of us doing a YouTube channel? And so I decided to kind of take the leap of faith and do it. But in process of creating the character, I decided to just do something a little different that I felt hadn't been seen before on YouTube. Because most of the people I watched were using, like, avatars and stuff like that. Right. And so I was just like, well, you know, what if I wanted to be an avatar but, like, alive? Like, what if I didn't want to just be me in front of a webcam? Um, so, yeah, I created Magog. And then the world that Magog is in is inspired by a novel I was writing for, like, five years. Which, uh, gra- uh, like a, a dark fantasy novel. Which, uh, so which, which I own a copy I borrow- of. The what? I own a copy of your book. I've read it. I've read your book. I loved it, actually. One of, one of, one of my books. One of your that, books? That, yeah, I never uh, got around to finish writing the Dark Fantasy, but you you read the Bacchus Vine. I did. I read I the Bacchus did. Vine. Yeah. 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 I, I was I was assuming that was kind of like part of the, the Magog universe, like tertiarily, a little bit. No, no, that takes place in modern times, and it was all about Greek gods and, and titans and stuff. So. Well, yeah, but I thought, uh, uh, well, all right, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> You know, no, this, you know your uh, fantasy worlds better than I know your fantasy worlds for sure. Yes, yes, indeed. No, I, I never finished that novel, so it felt good to use some of it mm. for something. And so Magog was born, and I tried on different costumes and different things, and finally settled on the white contact lenses and the dark makeup and all that stuff. Well, I will so, say the Bacchus Vine was a really fun read. It is very lewd. It is very yes, lewd. it is super lewd. It's. It starts off with a blood orgy and just gets worse from there. So I mean, how, how can you go wrong? <laughs> I liked it. It's, it's you know it's well it's important to open strong you know give readers a sense of uh, what they're in for. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like put this book down if you can't stand just, just this, the first five pages. Fucking go and furiously scribble notes like include blood orgies at the beginning of the book. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was a horror author for for many many years since, and I kind of still consider myself a horror author. So I wrote under a pen name, of course, but um, yeah. you know, so did you, Jeff. And I it's bought your book; it's sitting right over there. Oh, sweet man, mm-hmm. sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't gotten yeah. around to reading it though. I'm being honest, and that's because school. That's well, fine, spo- I, dude. Honestly, you know, spo- spoiler alerts: no blood orgies in the first act, at least. No, no. You didn't read Shit. my book, did you, Nick? You haven't read. No, my book. I, you, no, you never sent it to me. All right, all right. I'll, I'll 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 give you I'll give you a copy of VidCon or something like that. Okay, so there we the go. Thing, you were what supposed are, to last year. One of the things, though, I had to be honest with you. I have been super fucking jealous of you, uh, because of the Magog character for for a very specific reason. Like I, I d- despite the fact that I'm very uh, extroverted, like online. Uh, even when if you meet me in real life, when I'm doing like meetups or anything, or I'm at a convention, I seem very extroverted. But internally. I I am a very very introverted person. I have a lot of um, self doubt. I shit on myself more than anybody else could ever shit on me. Uh, so I found through the years I would start throwing these parties if I wanted to go out and I wanted to go and hang out with my friends. I would throw these costume parties, these bar crawls where we'd all go in costume because I felt more comfortable in a ridiculous ass costume surrounded by people in ridiculous ass costumes. I love really it. weird way to discover 
you know your 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 fursona, Jeff. No, it's not. No, no, no. We never did. We never. No, no. We never did a furry one. But we did like we did like an old man bar crawl. We did uh, uh, cowboys, yeah. cowboys and Indians, angels and demons, kind of shit. Like, I, there's some. No, no, no. That they call those fancy dress parties in England. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, something. They, there's they something... just go bar hopping and just cosplay. You know, they just have a good time. There's Why something... don't we do that more here? You know, that just sounds like fun. Like they don't even go to cons do it. to dress up. Like they just dress up and go out. Yeah. Like they're just like fancy dress party. It doesn't have to be Halloween. It doesn't have to be fucking. You show up as Spider Man and be, get, just get shit faced drunk. Who gives a shit? Exactly. You know, go, go, go really cheap and just pull a trash bag over your head. Like, just, like cut a hole in the bottom of a trash bag, pull it over your body and zip it. And like, what are you? Oh, a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> <laughs> But there's something there's something liberating about being in a costume because it allows you to to kind of to, to be able to like really express yourself way more than you'd be comfortable with when you're having to like put forward your regular person <laughs> face you know because right, yeah. people are just gonna judge you by this you know they're like oh, oh. yeah I, I know that that fuck but then if you are in like a crazy ass costume they don't they, they don't know how to judge you they just have to like experience you and i like that i like that a lot yeah yeah no i i also like the uh i like the kind of uh buffer it creates yeah like a lot of people get attacked on youtube or they get community strikes or they get flags or whatever or people go after them on twitter because they're all like saw your video and you're you're fucking nazi or whatever you know right yeah but it's hard to say that to a guy <laughs> a wizard dressed like a necromancer <laughs> with fucking dead eyes he's actually like on screen he's not just using an avatar to hide who he is or whatever you know yeah, no, yeah. nothing against people who use avatars i still watch you know all kinds of people that still use the well, avatar it's, thing sure. well it's funny I, you, I don't get dragged into drama because people well, are like oh it's a dog yeah, yeah well, you've yeah. kind of you you it's funny because like i mean in the same like you know in the same hope that you know because like the a lot for a lot of people the, the central thrust of using an avatar is that you you know you you've got that anonymity and so like you can't personally necessarily be like you know held to account or even just personally shit on because no one knows and then if you're on the other side of things you know you've got your face on it so like you're like no that's, that's just me you're like you, you found this it seems like you got a comfy middle ground there in a sense where it's like well no it's me and my face and my words and my voice but at the same time, it's like, well, I mean, you, are are you seriously getting upset about about what a a, a wizard on YouTube said? Like an actual fucking wizard? I li Did you see the tower? That's a tower he lives in. It's yeah, not a I, fucking I, condo. Yeah, I went really far to do it too. I I didn't want to just do it in a way that was like I'm in a costume, but behind me is just like my living room. Like I even use green screen effects so that there's a window and there's dragons that fly by and stuff, so that people really get immersed into the visuals of the world, you know? And so I was like, it kind of helps protect and shield me from certain criticisms. Cause it's, it's almost like walking up to triumph the insult comedy dog and being like, I don't like your politics. Yeah, like it's having, a fucking puppet. And, and, the <laughs> fact, and, and the fact that it's an actual character, right? Like, I mean, like, you know, even with the, like, you know, with the avatars and, and the sort of brands that people create behind them in, you know, in the anonymous sense. Yeah. Um, it's it. There's still, um, in many senses, a lot more of themselves actually in that because it's to them, it's like okay, they don't know my name, they don't know my face. This is, you know, I'll do my thing here. Whereas Magog is an actual character, so when you sit down to watch one of these videos, you're realizing like you've got to suspend both disbelief and any actual fucks you might have to give because it's it's a comedy bit. It's it's character. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy playing the character, and I, I love doing Poe, too. Poe is really cathartic. He doesn't have as many views as Magog does, but I, I just love doing Poe videos because it's just, I get to just be outlandish because he's a dead bird. He's a dead raven. That's pretty nice. You know? it's, it's really fun to just get on and be, you know, just be like, you know, you're all about your morons. You know, they're just <laughs> stupid. They're fucking stupid. You know, like... Like, whereas Magog kind of has to walk a little bit around a few things, Poe doesn't have to. Poe's just a dead raven that... Imagine, you know. it's, yeah, just imagine what you could do if, like, Poe was a, was a rubber cock or something. <laughs> right? Uh, okay. We haven't, seen a, we haven't seen a Wiggles video in a while, dude. I, I have not done a Mr. Wiggles video in a very long time. One of these, one of these days, I'll bring back Mr. Wiggles. One of these days. Yeah, that, that, you, you, can, uh, you can not put a rush on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
but it's, it's been funny. I, I, uh, I, 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 was, I have, I have no. never gotten as much controversy out of a video than I did when I did Mr. Wiggles videos. Something about putting googly eyes on a giant marital aid really, really upsets people. Like a lot. Like a whole lot. They just get really upset. And they just start well, calling it degenerate. Well, it's what what's really great about the character, and I'll finish it with this because I'm sure you guys have all kinds of stuff you want to talk about, but um, it, the character can second. evolve, whereas, like, avatars can't. So, like, right. now I'm on my way to making, like, a proper Magog sitcom. No, it's calculated. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. It's, and it's stuff. An, so, yeah, it, it's a calculated idea as opposed to, you know, as opposed to being just sort of an, an, an actual and the use of the word avatar is perfect because an avatar is just supposed to represent a thing as opposed to a character, which is something you create. Right. And, and, and I was, you know, I was talking to you uh, on, on your stream uh, a few days back. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, and, and this is why I like content like you and Beardies is because you create these characters and they give you the freedom to say whatever you want, and it's almost like you know you could say you could say shit that's like as outrageous as like you know the most shitty shit lord out there, and it's still like most people probably wouldn't even notice it that much just because it's like okay I'm watching a wizard or I'm watching a barbarian troop through the woods and haul bodies and shit. <laughs> right. The fuck am I even watching? What did he just say about feminists? I completely <laughs> missed that. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck's going on here. Yeah, I've, I've always been a, f a real big fan of juxtaposition humor and, and subversive humor, you know, yeah. like that stuff that just kind of hits you out of left field. I love that kind of humor, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I, uh, but... I'm, I'm, I, I have to do my own character-driven video here relatively soon again. I have to do another Hemlock. I do, I only do one Hemlock Moonwolf video a month. I, I we should we should do a collab. We should uh, with Beard should, uh, Magog and Hemlock and Beardy. Beardy and would Beardy. be good too to bring into it as well. I mean, I I'd love to do that, but I, I have to I have to put my foot down though because for a while when I first started doing the Hemlock Moonwolf character and I'm breaking the fourth wall. Usually I'm not going to do that on my channel. I usually am like I uh, that that's a totally different person. To, Kaufman thing. This but, isn't on our channel. This isn't on your channel. This is YouTube Saints. That's right. This is YouTube Saints. Uh, I but I had to put my foot down because when I first introduced the character, nobody wanted me to do videos not as Hemlock, and I was getting very upset, like really pissed off, because nobody <laughs> wa nobody wanted to see Jeff anymore. They just wanted to see Hemlock Moonwolf, and I'm like, I I, I got that. Be that's why I had to move my out of character streams to like a whole separate Magog Morskar live streams channel because people were like, "This breaks immersion." I don't like to see the real you. <laughs> How immersed were you? And I was like, "Jesus, they're like, do these guys think I'm real? Like, do they think I'm a real necromancer?" Like, that's kind of cool. And I love the following I get because people get followings and stuff. But my fans, they call me my lord. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's great. That is mine, awesome. Mine, mine, some, <laughs> some, some, some of mine call me daddy, but that's something else. Um, I do that's, <laughs> like that's, uh, that's that's a problem with you not liking content. <laughs> yeah. My, I just see no. I, I could just see. I could just see a hemlock though. Today, moon children, we're going to be blessed by one man who absolutely loves nature and another one who understands everything about magic. <laughs> Shit. It'll be so peaceful and serene. I just chopped a dude's head off. Ooh, can I have the body? <laughs> it's like, it's going to be so serene. It just cuts to me. Is this dick liquor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that one of the worst. Fresh hell is this? One of the, one of the worst things uh, about that character too is uh, I I absolutely fucking despise the voice. The voice for me is is the worst part of having to do anything with Hemlock Moonwolf. It really is because I can I can keep a straight face the whole time I'm doing something, even when it's retarded, even when I'm like I'm bearing more skin than I'm really comfortable with, and I'm very body conscious. I'm super conscious of my body. Like ugh, I'm gross, right? But I more than that, like the getting star children. Ew, God, yeah, it's, gross. A, it's, a, it's the really, really cringy hippie in like bad comedy movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's no, it's it's, it's performance well, art though. Yeah, that's a great that's a great character. To have. I'm like, that's fun. Well, Magog, did you train? I forget. Did you train in any theater or anything? No, I've never. No. Okay, I'm I'm like the one trained actor here, and I'm like the one guy who plays fewer characters than anybody else. <laughs> why did Why did you waste your life? 
Well, I, 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 I quickly discovered that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, he, he did, he did it for the, he did it for the food. He, he did, did it for the fucking food. Food is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I mean, I'm I'm the one person here. Craft services, I'm, 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 bitches. Craft services. That's well, why I did it. Outside yeah. of uh, outside of Joe Rogan and uh, Jordan Peterson, I'd say I'm one of the few people who actually got a chance to remark upon Russell Brand's magnificent beard in person. Hmm. That's wait. No, no one should be. I'm not proud of that. No, I should. No one should be proud of that. Uh, I'm definitely gonna probably do something about my beard. It's getting wild. Like, mm. it's getting way too thick and fucking annoying. I might just shave down to a goatee, because Magog's mm. still a young wizard. He doesn't need a big Santa Claus beard. Mm. Like, <laughs> you know? I dare you to go with handlebar mustache. Like, a handlebar mustache is like, I caught some of your, I caught some of your TV from the 70s. No, you know, you know what would I'm make... I'm planning a vacation, and I want it to be fashionable. No, you know what would make a unique wizard? Mutton chops. You never see a wizard with mutton chops. That's a good point. That's a you know, you this guys, shit you, right you, here. This is gone. It's just down. Yeah, you do, you you do realize, popping, like we're popping. gonna we're gonna get some serious fucking like we're gonna get some serious fantasy novel nerds like sending us like book covers with and, and images of wizards with mutton chops now. <laughs> yeah. So, no, 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 we're going to redub them wizard chops. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> mutton chop magic. <laughs> God damn. Oh man. <laughs> Too I do. I do. I, 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 I do. Mutton chops. That's gonna have to be like a dare. Like somebody, somebody like gives a, a super <laughs> chat or something, and I, I have to do it. I don't 50, know. Fifty, like a twelve hundred dollars super chat. It's like, oh fuck, I got no choice now, do I? I Next video just... using <laughs> mutton chops. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh no, a whole video of like Magog. You could, you could actually like pitch for a Dollar Shave Club endorsement and be like, okay, let's see if we can figure out how this works. Uh, no, it's not a crap. Don't bother with Dollar Shave Club. It's shit. There I goes my endorsement. I really feel sorry for anybody who wants an endorsement on my channel. Any company. That <laughs> mm -hmm. They're going to be like, oh, just say what you need to say, but we, we want you to shill our product. Okay. You really want Magog to do this? All right. Because I'm going to do it my way. I've turned down every single sponsor idea that that's come my way. They're they're always bad. They're not, there's nothing that I've been offered so far as a sponsorship that I actually actively use. I do use Dollar Shave Club, but they've never reached out to me, so... I don't have anyone reach out maybe, to me. Maybe I'm... after maybe after your visit with um, the doc, you'd you'd think you'd think by this at this point, like I'd at least have a distillery or two that reached out to me. Like, hey nice. guys, take takes a lot of, takes <laughs> I, a lot of work to kill the shade that lives within me for everything I've done. <laughs> Mate, you... I, I I use I use George Diggle whiskey <laughs> to kill that last shred of humanity before I hit cord. Nick Nick. <laughs> Nick, you should do fake sponsorships. Or like at the beginning of your next video, you just, you're all serious. There's like a white background, and Nick just goes, "Do you need, do you need frequent liver replacements like me? Then you're gonna want to head down to Tijuana." Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I hate nice. to interrupt, but, but this episode of YouTube Saints is uh, brought to you uh, in part by the Tijuana uh, School of Holistic Medicine. Uh, pinkies up for uh, praying for your kidneys. Pinkies no? up, That's pinkies how, up, guys. How we, yeah, I'd say we, we we do have sponsorship deals here. We don't tell you at the beginning of the video because like, you know, who really checks? So yeah. Uh real quick, Rimshi uh donated. If you guys ever want to talk guns, my DMs are always open to you and I was always hop always happily hop into voice chat. Of course, man. Uh Ben Mills, another small contribution to Death Shots. That's two to the oh. when was the last one? I think the other one was five. So that's about seven bucks towards one. Okay. I'm I'm in the clear. Um, um, I, I, I yeah. can talk guns a lot. Like, Keep... Oh, let's let's when let's I... let's talk guns here in a second. Um, let, let me tell you, man, I'm building I'm building the studio. It's out on twelve and a half acres of land, mm -hmm. and I am cutting right down the center of that twelve and a half acres, a hundred yard shooting range. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I can just step out my back door and fire all my because I got like twenty eight guns. Oh yeah. You know so. <laughs> I, I, I love guns and I live in the South, so nobody cares if you shoot off guns, man. You're like a, everybody does. You're you're a fucking <laughs> you're a fucking vet in the South. Of course you're gonna shoot yeah. some goddamn guns. Come yeah, on. In, yeah. Yeah, in in your area, if your neighbors don't hear gunshots for a week, they'll come over to check and see if you're feeling okay. Right. 
<laughs> yeah, it's but, weird because people here in Arkansas can tell the difference between white gunshots and black gunshots. Wait, wait. <laughs> you're going to have to explain that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this. Uh, if this you're out in the this... country and you hear bam, 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 people are like, ah, so-and-so down the street shooting his gun. You hear a gunshot in the city, people are like, oh, fuck, black gang members. I swear to God. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> what the fuck? I was really hoping you'd be going for more wizard stereotypes tonight, but uh, uh, monetization, we barely knew ye. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jenna Bell says I'm here to. I, I crack a lot of I crack a lot of jokes about Arkansas, but I do love it here. Oh yeah, no, I, I everybody. The thing is too, like I crack a lot of jokes about Arkansas as well. Um, but every single person I know who has lived in Arkansas actually aggressively really fucking likes that state, which is weird oh, yeah. to me. You know, you know, you, you know, when you know the economy is really bad, hmm. like in Arkansas, I knew the economy got worse than it has ever been in Arkansas when racists will be like, go back to Africa, nigger, and take me with you. Like, that's how you know. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> 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 like that's how you know, what? That's how you know the economy is real bad. <laughs> oh my god! Pretty good joke. <laughs> it kind of belongs in a, it belongs, it belongs in a stand-up set that's not allowed in twelve states. <laughs> there we go. Breathe oh. deep, Jeff. You still have yeah. super chats to break your heart. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Arkansas, man. And like we're not even as racist as like we used to be. People think the South is still like Mississippi burning. Like here in Arkansas, yeah, we have cross burnings, but it's more like a welcome to the neighborhood cross. <laughs> it's a bond cross. That's all it's a cross. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. No, listen, we only lit that thing on fire because it was standing up tall and we figured you'd see it from far away. It's like that, uh, what was it, that episode of Family Guy where they're burning a cross, or was it, was it, was it Family Guy or was it, um... American Dad? No, no, it's one of those. It's a definitely where they were like burning and they were like, no, it's a lowercase t. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I mm, I'll ooh. say I'll say honestly, my, my experience as a Yankee, all right, is that uh, like, and I lived, you know, I lived in New Orleans, which you can't really judge the South by New Orleans because that is just its own weird animal. Uh, it's yeah. like a little, it's a little space time, uh, you know. Well, New Orleans can't even decide how to say Nolans. No, 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 they, no, no, no. Here's the, no. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Jeff will back me up on this. Uh, if you live there. You figure it out because it just becomes a comfortable way to say it. But I have heard locals on like the tra- uh, on the on the fucking uh, on the streetcar, bitching like I am so sick of hearing motherfuckers every time around goddamn Mardi Gras saying Nolens, no, nah, shut the fuck up. You call it New Orleans, we call it New Orleans. Yeah, like, huh? that's that's yeah. actually no, that's that's very that's very real. If yeah, if, if you're if you're local. Yeah, it, hearing Nolans as a local makes you fucking cringe. Yeah, if and you, yet and yet I had an actual Cajun friend who grew up there who called it Nolans. It cannot you cannot hold any any way a Cajun says anything. Uh, you can't hold well, them accountable. It's not like they say it on purpose though. It's that, their fucking no, accent. That's, that's, they're sitting there going, "Man, do a day, man, do a day, man, I take on that Nolans, man, I'm making dirty." Like that's what they fucking sound like. That is what exact. That is exactly what they sound like. That is exactly what Cajun <laughs> sound like. Die. I see hey, your aura. You gonna die? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, roommate, my roommate and I, we were drunk, fucking challenging each other accents one time. He's like, "Hey, can you do a Cajun accent?" And I'm like, "Uh, well, give me something to say." And then he's like, "Well, go get that gate down." <laughs> huh? And the only reason I understood anything, and they, and when I met the Cajuns, the only reason I ever understood them is because they're Acadians, and I live around enough French Canadians here in New Eng- New Hampshire to where it's like, it's like. They're like I hear him talking, I'm like, why does this sound so familiar? Oh, you were people were expelled, and and then you came down and you decided the swamp was where you were gonna stay. Yeah, all right. it beats all me. The, all the beats southern me. accents, though, my favorite. I think the one that sounds the best is Savannah. Them <laughs> people sound like they're well spoken, but they're southern, so they're just like, 
I haven't even begun to defile myself. Mm -hmm. I have decided a long mm -hmm. time ago that every ounce of what I say will sound like pure sex if I can help it. Very <laughs> soft exactly. spoken. Uh, okay, so there was... Okay. <laughs> Fucking Jesus Christ. We're going, so, on, tangent. We're going <clears throat> on tangent. I was, was... I was trying to, uh, to spare you the heartache or at least delay it. Uh, so in New Orleans, uh, when I the first time I moved down there, my girlfriend at the time got a job with uh what was her name her name was miss shit oh shit it was up. like a perfect not miss shit it, it was uh it was like miss uh like miss joy or something like that and she had a consignment shop a consignment shop it was this labyrinthine uh old building just packed full of clothes it's very hard to navigate and she was a very very old very southern and she was from georgia uh old lady and she had, and I didn't know this until way into my relationship knowing her, uh, she had married a Nazi. <laughs> this is 100% true. After World War II, uh, this guy, he managed to immigrate out of Germany into, I think, France or something, where she met him. They fell in love. He was much older than she was, and they got married. And then eventually, like, uh, they, they immigrated to America, and he met, managed to live in America as a fucking former Nazi, and then he died. So I'm in this consignment shop, and I, I didn't, I, I kind of heard the rumor that she had married a Nazi, like, a long time ago. But she was very nice. She, she employed nothing but black women. Like, she wasn't racist at all. There was nothing weird about her. But I'm going through her shop one day, because my girlfriend's working, and I find a pair of lederhosen traditional leather lederhosen and i'm like well fuck these are awesome she goes oh darling <laughs> you gotta go try those on right now honey absolutely i'm like okay well cool all right so i, I go into the changing room and i i change into these lederhosen and i look at myself in the mirror i'm like no 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 way these are these are these are <laughs> these are tight lederhosen and I'm like, ah, I'm not coming out. And she's like, oh, you darling, you better come out. You better come out right now. I need to see you in them lederhosen. Uh, all right, fine. So I come walking out. My fucking meat's all packed in in this, like, weird fucking mass and shit. I'm wearing, like, a T-shirt and lederhosen, nothing else. My white mayonnaise legs sticking out and everything. And Miss, what, what was her name? Miss, Miss, we'll just call her Miss Joy. Miss Joy looks at me. And she clutches her pearls. And I swear to God, she clutches her pearls. And she goes, Darling, I have never seen a finer example of an Aryan man. If the Fuhrer were here, he'd snatch you right up. <laughs> and let me guess, you bought him on the spot. He fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking ran back into the goddamn changing room, changed back into my punk rock gear, came right back out, and bought them immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you didn't clutch your pearls and go. I got a case of the vapors. I know, dude. It was so <laughs> fucked. I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. Like, are you seriously? I like. Well, really? that's the thing. I I, really? I have I have honestly noticed. I mean, just from my like, because you know, when I was in New Orleans, we, you know, I spent a decent amount, you know, a decent amount of time in Mississippi and uh, some uh, you know, time out in like places like Pearl River, Louisiana. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. there's more, hor there's like more horses and, uh, gators than people. And, um, yeah, well, it's funny cause like, you know, when the, the racism in the South, it makes itself very fucking apparent. And most of the people in the South just kind of like, yeah, that's great heritage. That's, that, that's fucking lovely, man. I'm yeah. Great. You come up North though, like, like New England, I, I swear to Christ, I think New England's probably the most racist place out there. Cause like, uh, you'll find like you get here and it's all this like, attitude of tolerance and welcome but then when you talk to the people they've got no problem just being like you know what's fucking ruining this place yeah those fucking those fucking mexicans yeah it's like <laughs> what me do you mean do you mean the dude sitting at the other table yeah those guys i'm like they're puerto rican whatever i don't care where in mexico they're from <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking seriously i shit you not no i was working i was working in the pizza kitchen called bertucci's Working in this pizza kitchen, this is actually like where I kind of I learned more Spanish there than I learned in college <laughs> Spanish. So I'm working there with nothing but Dominicans, and so I'm teaching them English. They're teaching me Spanish, and it's like you know it's trade. We were all like, it was a good time. It made like working the the, the work in the lines during the rush is a lot more interesting because like they'd be like uh, you know con saboya like oh shit yeah okay I got it uh, you know carne con soya like oh wait, wait meat and onions got it yeah there we go. Um, 
So, like, this is my buddy Calvin. He's, like, he's Puerto Rican. He's living in, like, Lawrence, Mass. And Lawrence, Puerto Ricans are as American as they fucking get. And uh, he's just working. He's like, oh, man, you know, this is after my Spanish final. We were supposed to have a two-minute conversation in Spanish with the teacher one-on-one. -on -one. And when I get down and I sit down expecting to have some difficult conversation... And in English, she's just like, you need a Spanish girlfriend. The the American girls only care about the cars and the money, but the Spanish women, I'm like, oh, wow. This is way too obvious for me. So I get back. I tell this to my buddy Calvin, who's working on the pasta line. He's like, oh, fuck it. Fuck no, you don't, man. Like, for real. Like, that's like having a fucking parole officer. You'll be hanging outside with your boys, and the girl will all of a sudden be at the screen door. Won't even open. It's just like, the fuck you doing out there? Get your ass back inside. I'm like, yeah, for real? He's like, oh, yeah, man. Like, I tried dating white chicks, but the worst part is, like, the other day, and we were working in the mall. He's like, yeah, cutie little girl, right? She comes out of, like, you know, Forever 21 or whatever. I'm chopping with her and shit. And she's like, hey, where are you from? So I'm not going to say Lawrence. I, oh, I'm from San Juan. She's like, where's that? And I say, oh, that's in Puerto Rico, baby. And I shit you not, man. She asked me, what part of Mexico is that in? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, I oh, love yeah. New England. No, yeah, it's like it's like it, that, you know. I honestly sometimes think that culture in New Hampshire is probably the greatest argument against an ethno state that's ever existed. <laughs> well, I, I, I just uh, my my biggest argument against an ethno state is do you know what actually cures racism. In my in my experience, this might be anecdotal, but in my experience, what really stops racism is racism between friends. <laughs> making it a joke. Yeah, making it yeah. a goddamn joke. Like I have, I have a, I have a, I have a black friend. His name is Ivory. I shit you not. <laughs> How do you avoid it at that point? Yeah, and it's just <laughs> like we go at each other all the fucking time. He calls me Cracker Jack, you know, like, like I one time he come fucking walking up. We were all sitting outside smoking. He come walking up. He's like, "What's up, guys? I'm here." And we, I went, "Oh shit!" I was like, "Man, you need to fucking smile more. It's the only way I can see you coming in the dark." <laughs> you know, shut up cracker you know and we're fucking great friends you know well like, you know i mean we'll take yeah we'll take the modern incarnation of this bullshit right like the most modern like oh, i'm not racist i just want a place that i can raise the children uh white children around the white children you know these kind of idiots like i'm not racist i just don't want any of the darkies around me what like be, beyond like you know they, they don't want <laughs> They don't care when people argue against them. They don't care when people, like, you know, demolish their points. They just sort of wait in the wings until they can jump on a cringe train and get some more attention. But the one thing they can't seem to stand more than anything else is people making fun of them. They can't fucking deal with people not just not indulging their ideology, but not taking it seriously in the slightest to the point where it's a joke. And there was a, there was a, I mean, a fun example of this was uh, when I was organizing um, home care nurses. It was in Western Pennsylvania, the old Rust Belt, right, mining country. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, and one of the one of the organizers, the staff organizers, this woman had been a care nurse for like t fifteen or twenty years, and prior to that, she was a coal miner. And it's this old black grandmama, right? Like, and she's the most wonderful badass woman I'd ever met. She had to retire from coal mining with a settlement because of black lung. And uh, and I asked her, I'm like, all right, so in, in that day and age, and I'm talking like this woman's like in her 60s, and this was about 10 years ago. And I'm like, okay, so when you were younger, how the hell did you deal with being a coal miner in that era? And she's like, well, they, they tried being a bunch of like racist ass motherfuckers, but I, I put them in their place. I'm like, how'd you do that? And I'm, and I'm seeing her like, I'm already telling them like, oh, you, you basically just gave them a mom voice, didn't you? She gave them all collectively one joke a day with the condition that it had to be good it had to be funny and she's like oh baby they came to me with so many terrible jokes and i told them you keep this up i'm going to take out a privilege away from you and it became such a game with them that eventually like they stopped even being racist and sexist and shit they started coming up to her and just offering her the best joke they could come up with because that's right. part of that's how you start nice. the day nice yeah. yeah 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 that's how you really defeat it like you know what's interesting about arkansas this is actually kind of interesting um we have the largest population, or at least had for a while. I'm not sure now, but um, we had the largest for a long time. Had the largest population of Vietnamese. Really? Um, yeah, and uh, we're the, the only state in the entire United States that grows rice. Wow, that's um, that's, that's wild. We have we have the weather for it. So Southern Arkansas's getting close to Louisiana, so it's getting close. You know, the, the bayou starts, and it's humid and it's hot but there's these massive fields of just rice, you know, cause it, they grow water, you know? 
And right. it's just the perfect weather for it. So like 40% of the nation's rice comes from Arkansas. You can go to a grocery store, flip over a bag of rice, and it'll say Arkansas long rice on it. No like, shit. Yeah, people are like, no, rice comes from China. No, they got a billion mouths to feed. They keep their rice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, it's it with that here, it's so weird because you'll get like some, like, especially in some of these small towns, you'll get some old school like 80 year old fucking racist, right? That's like racist against black people, but he got a Vietnamese wife. Oh yeah. God. Oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. weird. Yeah. You get weird shit like that all the fucking time. Oh dude, I've seen that. No, I've seen that up here. There's a local guy here. Like I've known him for about the two years that I've lived where I have. And he used to date the Nepalese, uh, the Nepalese girl who worked at the shop next door. And he like, and he then he started we got into a conversation one time. I told him about like, oh yeah, I'm on YouTube, and he had he's like, oh yeah, I'm alt right, and I'm like, aren't you like dating this Asian chick who doesn't even actually she's not even a citizen? And he's like, oh yeah, well I mean you know it's like this and that, but you know I you know I think we need a pure ethno state. I'm like, yeah, but aren't you marrying her? <laughs> right. Well, I told him about two weeks ago too that I'm Jewish. He's like, wait, 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 you remember the you remember the tribe? I'm like, yeah. He's like. Well, you never gave me any signs. I'm like, what are the fucking signs? We're not all Woody <laughs> Allen, dude. You didn't you didn't do one of these. I mean, like, well, no, but I was also, I'm like, wait a second. You didn't pick up on the fact when I told you that I, I run a late night show for a living? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I, yeah. I'm really surprised when I joined YouTube, the acceptance of the community, I guess you could say, or the people that I talk to. Um because at first I was like really trying to like kind of censor myself, not sure what kind of jokes would take, what people would get offended by. Because I always test the waters in real life and I didn't quite know there was a separation of real life and internet. And for the, I, get, I guess even now there's, in my mind, there still really isn't. I'm still outside of being Magog, which is, I am an insult comedian. I say some outlandish shit, but all in all, I, I'm a respectful guy. I try yeah. not to get on anybody's bad side. I try to get along with everybody, even if I disagree with them. And so, like, it was really interesting to get on, like, live streams for the first time and people were cracking racist jokes and all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, I'm home. Yeah, well, it's because we're not. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's because, like you said, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, not taking not taking not taking the stupid shit that genuine fucking racist assholes say seriously and making a joke of their entire belief system. There's no better way to fight this shit. Shut up. not. Dude. Well, I mean, what? you know, it's it, it's it's weird too. Because you say as you light a cigarette. It, it's it's super easy when you're online. Like you run into the the wrong kind of crowd, and and you say like a, a racist joke, an off color joke, that sort of thing. But it's all in good fun. You're not actually trying to like put any ill will towards them. Uh, the outrage brigade will come out, and they'll have their sh their fists shaking and whatnot. But if if you're out and about in the real world and you run across like a real racist, like what what is what is your initial reaction to it? Yeah, if they you, they fucking freak me out, man. They freak <laughs> me out too. They totally freak me out. But if there's somebody like, who's just real, like, actual, honest to god, hate racists. Like yeah. to me, there's there's like good there's there's actually like good hearted racists around here and that's really weird to say because it's a it's an odd culture we have in the south. Like I know people who are racist as fuck, but they're kind of like, like the like the black guy that's the next door neighbor will be over there having a beer and they'll be talking and everything will be great. And then they'll walk away and, and the white dude will be like, I like that nigger. And you're sitting there going, okay, that's racist, <laughs> but it's also really nice. Like I don't know. Like I'm so confused right now. Uh, you're taking you're taking baby steps, Mister Racist. You take a baby, and and the thing is too, like when that sort of thing happens, what do you do? Do you be like, that's racist, or you be like, well, yeah, he's a cool dude. Like, do you encourage the behavior of like, hey, maybe people can be cool? And well, it's, some people just come from a different time. Like they the people do. I talk about are in their like 50s and 60s, and you just have to kind of accept. Well, them. and you, and when you also have to kind of feel bad for like the older folk who like they came up when like racism was the norm and they were using mm. colored folk, right? And then over like you know a good 30 years, they learn not to use the word colored folk. And now we've got like now we've got people running around calling people of color colored folk. That's racist, but you said it. No, I didn't. What right. The I'm there is so absolutely confused. no difference between the term colored folk and people of color. Right. It literally means the same thing. Means the same damn thing. Same damn thing. <laughs> and words like, mean things. 
Now I'm not condoning that because like I see. I wonder I, you know, how I see that kind of racism all the time. That's kind of like. How do you like, think albinos feel it? though when they hear that? Like people of color. How do you think an albino feels when they hear the term person of color? Because they're like, I'm the only one that doesn't about have any. No, no, fucking. I come from the, the proud albino people. Okay. Albino uh, people. All I, right. And, and we turn colors. Okay. I, my, my, my goal, okay. my dream is for all racist terms to end up being as hilarious as Pecker would. That's my dream because <laughs> yeah. there, there is no funnier racist term than Peckerwood. And I, I love it. I, I absolutely, I have, I have been unironically called to my face by a very angry person. Peckerwood got in my face. I, there was, there was nothing racist about what we were talking about. Nothing at all. We were just having an argument. Uh, and heated and gaming he got moment happened in my face. It wasn't a black dude. He was actually Mexican, no. and he called heated gaming moment. Heating gaming moment, and he called me a peckerwood, and he was really mad. And he was bit. He was bigger than me. I'm five nine, and he was way bigger than me. And he's towering over me. He's peckerwood, and this is a moment that you're not supposed to laugh. And I fucking lost it. Yeah. I fucking lost up. it. I I started cracking yeah. up, and I bought the guy a drink. Because he called me Peckerwood mm -hmm. because I thought it was that goddamn funny. And we actually ended up being really good friends afterwards. Um, just, right. just because he called me Peckerwood. And Misunderstandings it's... happen. And I, I want to make it clear right here on the show live. I don't condone actual racism. Um, no, I do not. think there's a difference not. between lighthearted racist jokes amongst friends. Like the racist jokes I crack, I would never say to a random stranger. Oh, of course. Because you, obviously, you, you just if they don't know me, in front of a thousand random strangers. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 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 talking with you guys. We just happen to be yeah. blocked, yeah. and I get to explain myself in a normal situation. Like if I'm at a gas station talking to a friend, and I crack a joke like that, and a black person overhears it, I don't have time to explain myself. <laughs> right, <laughs> you, right. You, know? you just you, you look at your friend like there's no time to explain. Get in the car. <laughs> yeah. Right. That, that's the difference. So I want to make. I'm it sorry. <laughs> I want to make it abundantly clear that I don't think this is just a cut and dry race. Like racist rhetoric isn't so cut and dry as people think it is. It's no, like, oh, there's racism and non-racism. I think there is a mixture because I know some really good hearted people who would help black people who have helped black people who have like donated money to starving families and shit like that. But they use some off-color language from the olden well, days. You know, I think that's. You know? well, right. I think that's the difference, though. Is the difference? It's the difference between words and rhetoric. If you're using words, it's it's contextual, like it's it's context-oriented. I mean, then and we we all just had a friend go through a trial where we hashed out what context means, and we know certain places it doesn't count. But that being the case, I mean, words words are context-oriented. Rhetoric, the context is built in. So if your rhetoric, be it like, you know, be it the old school, uh, you know, like lynch the niggers shit, that's pretty plain oh and obvious. Oh my God, stop or saying the... that word on my channel. Oh my God, you guys are going to get well, me a strike. I swear well, to God. We're breaking it down though, we're unpacking it. No, but YouTube doesn't care. That's true. Take take it off your main channel and just upload it to your well, live. No, I was really hoping though. I was really hoping <laughs> that like we could keep it here and then repost it to the Saints so that Jeff could DMCA the Saints channel and then I could DMCA Jeff and we could just have a whole circle of who owns this thing and we own it all together anyway. But all the same, I mean like you take the old school like nasty shit, right? That people used to say. And then you know, you can you compare that to like uh, you know, you compare that to uh a modern joke versus this sort of very fucking obviously coded language that modern dipshits use. And what you've got is this, if you've got, you've got the perfect and very obvious context question uh, to the point where like, why the fuck are we even like, you know, it's pretty plain and obvious who you can take seriously and who you shouldn't have to. And if, and if people are actually like having fun with it, I think, Personally, at least, that's the best way to to really fight. The shit, because <laughs> I don't as know you how see, they get pissed. I don't. I don't. I don't know how we got onto this topic. It just happened. I would like to formally apologize to Jeff. 
It's um, okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally if, fine. If you need but, to send me the video, I will blank out all the words and send it back to you. It's totally fine. I will fine. fucking no, no, put no, no, bleeps no. over the words. It's still, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually that triggered. I'm not actually that triggered. But, I mean, like, the, the message behind it is actually very real and very true, though, you know? like uh, I was just trying to make a point that people like to shit on the South. They and do. they don't realize and we need and we need to come is, together to is, shit on the real racists. There is some real like actual like stuff that happens that they don't understand. They do. Um, yeah. You know. There is. It's, uh, and oh, by, it's by the way too, a uh, quick message um I if I go away um just know that it's because a big fuck you thunderstorm is over my head right now so if I lose power. <laughs> like, I don't fair. know if you guys have been hearing it but it set off a car alarm a minute ago. The thunder. I thought no, I thought we were getting no. back into some weird wizard shit. There, we're like, if I go away, it's because I'm being called back. Yeah, it's so, it's it's coming down out there. I think uh, I'm gonna get real, 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 we'll see. real real quick before we we move into some uh, some super chats because we got to catch up with these. We've been we've been slacking on them. Uh, some that I re I really did honestly want to say is. Um, uh, I took a death shot and my brain has turned to mush and everybody's trying to get a strike on my channel. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, what I, what I did, really, no, what I, what I did legitimately want to say is very, it's very, very simple. Um, if, if words, especially when it comes to like racially charged words, if these types of things are uh, a moment of of sacredness, the idea that if these things hold so much power inherently, if you hear them, if they're spoken out loud, that means that those words have a certain type of societal power over you. They have a power over you. They have a power over whoever hears them and has a very strong emotional response to them. How you defeat these words and how you make these words no longer be able to hurt other people is you have to normalize these words or make jokes out of these words. You have to be able to like look at these things objectively and crack a joke about it. You have to be able to like downplay their effect with the people that it would affect them by. Uh, that's how you actually make a change with this type of shit. Otherwise, it's and, just it's just uh, 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 posturing, or you're being yeah. held hijack. Your emotions are hijacked by uh, the societal implications of somebody uttering uh, auditory syllables, and that to me is ridiculous. And I'd, I'd add to that too. I'd add to that too, real quick. Also, that I mean, if you encounter somebody who's legitimately like uh, hurt, offended, like like not just virtue signaling or posturing, but they're like legitimately offended. Um, by you know, by you, you're obligated by human decency to make apologies for causing the offense. But moreover, it does offer an opportunity to sort of explore the nature of context and words. Because if if an off color joke that is meant in good faith, that is actually meant to mock the shit idea behind racism as opposed to a race in in it in and of itself. Then that kind of conversation, whether or not the two of you or however many people you're talking to agree on that point, opening up that kind of dialogue, like that's more important because what we've been faced with for so long is that you are not allowed to say X, Y, and Z, and if you do, you're a terrible person. And other people, nefarious people, people with really shitty motives who will tell you one thing to your face and then chuckle in a different direction behind your back are the kinds of people who will go around, um, you know, who will go around stoking these kinds of flames to only make that worse. We're never going to get through this shit until we actually hash this shit out. And we're never going to be able to do that if one side is telling us that we can and cannot say certain things while the other side is taking full advantage of that, saying, look at what a victim I am right. now. <clears throat> right. And I, I'd like to I'd like to say before Jeff reads Please. Super Chats, um, we live in a great country because it's so diverse. When hardcore leftists use like countries in Europe as examples of how we're supposed to be, they're mostly countries predominantly white. Yeah. They don't have to deal with the same shit we do. We're right. working through it I'm because we right. have such a massively diverse population and freedom of speech. And those things can clash. The people like that own like YouTube and Twitter and stuff need to let us work through it. They do. They do. The America is still a grand <laughs> experiment. It is still right. the grand experiment. I agree, man. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Rimshi says, take my last Streamlabs, and this one is against your next death shot. Now, for everyone else, mm. you're $30 farther behind. Uh, no, you can't do that. The you, the first one that you, you put, we'll, we'll do five bucks against the, the death shot. Uh, I dare you to donate enough to get another. That means 
I'm at <laughs> 45 bucks to doing a dust shot. So let's see what the other one says. Uh, I really don't want to do another one. Holy shit. Um, let's see. Nonsensical Mecca. For Bizarro Magog, you are a fantastic voice actor. Just wanted to tell you so. I also love the purple wizard's robes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Magog got an upgrade because he got done at the Magical Academy of Runeveld. <laughs> AKA link to real life. I finished school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, character Holding says Magog isn't related to Andromeda, is it? Um, I've heard that. I've never watched that show, but even Undoomed was all like, there's an alien race called Magogs, and I was like, great. Well, I mean, shit. I mean, I've I never seen that show either. Yeah, well, I streamed with you last year and alerted you to the fact that there is actually a city in Canada named Magog. That's there's, what I know Magog yeah, as. There, there is the cog in Magog in the Bible and stuff like that. I knew that going in, but I needed a name that sounded like a fantasy name but was also like real easy to say and I could get like the Hollywood M's. So I had my book I was writing and it had a bunch of different kingdoms in it, Sarthos, Volgoth, Morskar. And I was like, those Hollywood M's, man, they're so easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Magog of Morskar, Magog of Morskar rolls right off the tongue and it sounds like fantasy, but it's not like heavy fantasy. It's not like something from Lord of the Rings where they're like, yeah. my name is Endula. Oh, you know? dude. <laughs> I was, I was, I'm, I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading like I'm almost, finished with the two towers right now i've been reading it to my daughter and yeah i'm getting through and it's like you know there's one paragraph that names five mountains and they're like with lundweer lund the fuck were you doing token i needed to be short and simple magog easy to remember but I needed it to sound fantasy, but not too fantasy. I didn't want to be like Glarfindel or something like that, right? So, yeah, I just kind of settled on it. And I really love the kind of ring to it because it sounds menacing, it but does. it also sounds kind of funny. Magog. So it was like a perfect blend. It's just Magog, you know? It reminds well, me of uh, Mangog from like the old uh, the old Thor, Thor comics. Like the Mangog was like a very, very fierce uh, destroyer of the gods kind of thing. So like this, this is the first thing that I thought of. Or semi -real. Yeah, I mean, I'll say the very fact that, like, we actually had to ask, and it was like, okay, it's up to you, it's a matter of comfort, do you want to call me Jeremy or Magog? And it's like, <laughs> I got, a lot of people, when Magog I finally, is kind of natural at this point. <laughs> right, right? Well, a lot of people, when I finally revealed my name, uh, because of the whole doxing situation, hmm. um, a lot of people could tell me I don't look like a Jeremy. Like, I get, I get that a lot now. They're like, you, you look more like a Brad. Or like, like you know, like or like a Magog. Of... <laughs> yeah, you look. Like... You look like a Magog. Uh, Anime Moon you says. Know, you... Anime Moon you says know... crap hit the wrong one. Oh well, here's another five bucks. The format shall be appeased with blackjack, anime titties, and the steeliest of panther. Uh, panther cummies and John Jonathan Davis styrofoam cups made the death flow and fuck you ghoul. Stay away from my ID. That's okay. a word salad. Uh, mm -hmm. 35 away from a death shot then. Bar two. Jeff, does death shot make you a sexual medium? Every time I take a shot, you seem to be jacking off ghosts. Oh, okay. Also, <laughs> is defense against the dark arts just Hogwarts way to prevent school shooters? Wizards, please respond. <laughs> I'll God, let the go first. Fuck. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't even make that into a good joke right now because we just had a school shooting. I know. <laughs> it's really hard to make that into a joke and not feel bad later. That's a pretty I mean, spicy <laughs> one. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, I. Yeah. I. I. You know. I'd say that. Um. Uh. You know. Bulletproof Harry Rod Harry Potter robes are pretty hot on Amazon right now. Yeah. But yeah. um. Yeah. But uh, it's you know. <laughs> Here's the sick thing, and we see this every school shooting because whenever the activist set comes out in this day and age, they have to cite Harry Potter as though they were saying, what would Jesus do? And uh, the thing was, is every student at that school was technically armed. Now, if you guys really want to take the Harry Potter model, I think you need to go a couple steps beyond the Texas governor when it comes to suggesting what it is we it's should do. It's not just that. Have, have people forgotten how horrible it was at Hogwarts? People died. Yeah. Yeah. Like and fucking Voldemort showed up and murdered teachers and students alike. <laughs> like, and then others and then yeah. other students were encouraged to murder other right? students. Yeah. Like that that is not a good model for actual like real life people. Come on. Yeah. I would but yeah, geez. I mean 
Also, I mean, you know, let's 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 keep in mind that this was like a boarding school where kids were taken away from their parents. So in that case, like, and like nobody there has parents. So and I can tell you this: if there was a whomping willow on my school campus when I was in high school that fucked up my car, I would have chainsawed that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, Charles Fowler. This is back in uh, we were talking about Magog and uh, Hemlock Moon Wolf. Magog, you should invite him to Tavern Talks. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a new show outside of SideQuest. SideQuest is starting in June with two new co-hosts, two two new co-hosts, as as well as Beardy and Magog. And then after that, we're going to get pretty heavy into the, the tavern talks, which is going to be more of a loose format hangout. Sweet. You know, uh, it's love to sweet. have you guys. Love to have you guys. Yeah, it'd be great. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have to actually force Nick to be in costume this time, though, rather than <laughs> shit out on me. I like promise. Last I'll, no, I, I don't had a costume. It. I don't want to hear Technically. It. Mm -mm. You let me down. Technically. Wife, you I let was, me down. I was dressed as I was dressed as a Malfoy, and a solid half of this planet would say that's a qualifiable wizard. Wife. You're 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 always dressed like a Malfoy, so it doesn't count. That's true. Yeah. See, it's right. I always look like I do like, right now I look like a goddamn devil. It's right, who says Magog, Hemlock, and Beardy, a necromancer, a shaman, and a Viking. Excellent. Crab ninety, a drunk philosopher king, a pro science hippie, and a necromancer walk into a bar. The bartender says Bartender runs for his life. Uh, good idea for sure. KS Wheels, I'm late. I wonder if the Duchess of whatever makes Harry call her queen. As an apology for that joke, take my money. <laughs> uh, mysterious Senior Hitler, again, <laughs> making death shots count an even 10 for you, buddy. God damn it. Okay, we're ba -ba -boom. about to 27, I think. 27 to go for another death shot. Serenity Cucci, I regretfully informed that hashtag Mutton Chop's magic is currently being used by Mutton Chop Bang Daddy Online. They humbly <laughs> request that you do not mix their serious art with your wizards against Death Shot, please. Ooh, hey. Hey. <laughs> up to, up, what did I say, 27? Yeah. Okay, no, 35. Uh, Get the yeah. abacus. Oh, yeah. No, it's a 35. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Buck says Magog's heard this one but back in college I'd wear my granddad's M65 field jacket some hipster asked me where I got such a vintage coat so I told him I got off my buddy at k -San. he gave me a blank stare and asked which mall is that oh, k -San <laughs> mall holy shit <laughs> that's pretty that good is a product I... of a... there is a lot of people walking around that are product of a generation who has never actually seen real hard times oh yeah well, i mean yeah, oh, yeah well i mean consider like what portion of our of our population actually joins the military i mean your prior service um yeah i mean like, very technically i am i remember one time like i had my you know i'm still wearing my tags because i still had them at the time i was like pretty much fresh out and uh i was out of the beach I had the chain underneath my shirt, like you're supposed to fucking wear them. Yep. And uh, yeah, and then like some like some kids, some fucking random kid stops me. He's like, "Yo, is it what's that? What's on that chain?" I'm like, uh, "Dog tags." Like, "Oh, where'd you get them made?" I'm like, "Fort Benning, Georgia." <laughs> <laughs> I, th th they'd be happy to have you. Here's, I'm here's sure. Something cool. Can you guys see my my? Let me turn on Skype so I can. Let me pull up Skype so I can see my own screen. Check that out. There's a picture of me shaking hands with George W's. Nice, man. That's cool. Look at you. Yeah, look how look how little I am. Look how that's, young. That's, that's, that's that's, there's 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 no face there. Yeah, what, uh, I got a sign. There's there's George W's signature right there. That's there's sweet. there's my team. There's my team. Which there uh, I am. which base are you at? Uh, REF Mildenhall in England. Gotcha. I spent yeah. five years there, and then of course my tour in Iraq, and I did convoys. So, I got my my convoy team right there. Four two four medium truck detachment. There you go. Yeah. But Everybody always asks. They're like, "How was Iraq?" I love it when civilians ask that. They're like, "How was Iraq?" I go, "It was a blast." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't I don't. Oh my think god! It, it's almost I like you're wait, dealing wait, wait, with wait, awful on, shit on. with humor. Hang on, I don't I don't think everybody's gonna be able to catch that joke though. You might have to actually explain that one. <laughs> Everybody knows what an IED is. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, I know, but but you actually you actually did some, catch an IED. Some better than sure. others, yeah. No, I I never got hit. Um, well, 
You guys got hit by something. I fucked, I fucked up my neck, um, which is why I'm out of the military. Um, because I dukes a hazard my truck over a concrete barrier that was in the road to stop our convoy. Because uh, they they we were in North Baghdad and we pulled down a street and there was a big concrete barrier laying in the road. They intended to stop our our convoy and then start shooting from rooftops. So we saw movement on rooftops, AK 47s and and small arm, uh, other small arm, you know, pistols and things like that. And, uh, RPGs. And so we just fucking went over <laughs> the fucking thing and I was in the maintenance, Bob. So I was like 40 miles per hour over that motherfucker. Boom. Hit my head on the ceiling, compressed my spine and blew a disc. Mm-hmm. It was like, what a bitch ass way to fucking injure yourself but it happened you yeah, know save, save, saving you saving <laughs> your bo- saving your buddies lives uh and avoiding a fucking ambush you know what a bitch way to go my god you should be ashamed <laughs> people have so much cooler war stories they're like they're like oh how'd you get injured i was shot 18 times and then i knifed that motherfucker i knifed him up close and personal like and then i fucking ate his entrails and i'm like i hit my head <laughs> 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 I had I had a car accident. It was bad. I hit a Jersey barrier. <laughs> but, you know, I did. I did yeah, no, my, you say you you save motherfuckers' lives, dude. But I did get my uh my my medal for it, my combat action medal there. That's cool. holy shit for sure. All right, uh, Rim. She says, "Fine, Jeff. Here's twenty five to make it thirty against. Why you fight me trying to save your liver? So I'm at at at, at even keel. <laughs> probably unless somebody wants to drop fifty bones, I'm probably not gonna have to do with that shot." Thank you. Uh, Calligator <laughs> says, hey, speaking of hangouts, Magog should totally check out the after show. We'd love to hang out with the wizard and Bizarro World Wizard sometime. Uh, that's true. There is an after show. Every time we do the Saints, there's an after show on twitch.tv slash Calligator, C-A-L-I-G-A-T-O-R. Uh, and then let's catch up real super quick, and then we got to move on to our undersubbed. Uh, we got... Uh, character holding says thanks for the explanation about your name, Magog. Been wondering ra- about that for a while. Uh, yeah. Shane Frost says Nick is the American John Constantine. Don't don't inflate this <laughs> fucking ego. That actually, I get a, I I get. I would the, be I get, bad for you. Oh, I get no. I get the I get the best. I get the best comparisons. It's it's sort of the yin to like Jeff's like Yang. Like people are like, here, Jeff, have money and kill yourself. Nick, here's money. You look great. <laughs> uh michelle ashlock jeff when is youtube saints in second life happening god yeah uh did we did yes what? we we committed that at some point we are actually going to do that i'll make that happen at some point it's going to be fucking ridiculous uh I, I, horrible i know uh bougie boo boo winky says school hired off-duty bouncers for security years ago Zero shootings and budget in the black. Downside, a $5 cover and two drink minimum to enter each day. <laughs> yes! That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, okay, real quick, real quick. Uh, so, uh, Jeremy, you got the uh, the My Circle link open, right? Yep, yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so, our undersub of the week is... Uh- well, I'll introduce him. This guy's Nick Lavalle. Now, uh, normally we leave the undersub if we can to the guest, but um, we just couldn't coordinate and such. And uh, this is actually he's a local. I mean, he was on Last Comic Standing. Uh, he runs uh, he runs most of the local comedy around here, and he will be a guest on this show uh, at uh, some point soon. He's at theotherdude.com. This is a this is a little stand a uh, little bit of his uh, stand up act. And when we get to MC8, I'll just call him, and tell him, dickhead, stop it. Uh, I actually don't have, oh, wait, oh, I do have control of it. Okay, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's watch it. Oh my god, fuck you, Rhino. God damn it. Mm. <sighs> Our buddy after Rhino. The clip, after the clip, or wait, during the clip, during the clip. Like during the ahead. clip, during the clip. Our buddy Rhino just super chatted 50 bucks. Sorry, Jeff, eat a dong, enjoy your shot, see you at VidCon. You know what, Rhino? You know what? I got your fucking number, man. I got your fucking number. I'm going to destroy you at VidCon. Let's watch this guy, and I'm going to pour a fucking shot. Pray for my liver. And I'm watching Jeff, so I'm, I can verify you. Yeah. <sighs> I have guy friends that are so... Wait, 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 Why is that so quiet? Hang on. I got to boost this up real quick. There you go. Uh... And it's and it's actual stand up on YouTube Saints, so hey. And uh it's, look forward to having Nick. Nick, uh if 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 uh when you see the in- influx of subs here, you'll know where it came from. <sighs> okay, let's go. 
I have guy friends that are so dumb. I have guy friends of mine. They always like roll their eyes and they say shit like, oh, fucking millennials. And I'm like, what? They're interesting. They're fun. They're doing cool things with their lives. You gave up on their dreams. He's like, no, fucking millennials are eating Tide Pods. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> but I got to defend. So I'm like, yeah, and it's fucking cool. You know? I'm like, who are we to judge millennials eating Tide Pods? I'm from a generation that made Johnny Knoxville and the jackass guys millionaires for shoving toy cars up their assholes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, I, I like it. I think millennials are cool. Millennials will do butt stuff on the second date. It's like, they're cool. <laughs> His friends say, like, well, my wife does butt stuff. I'm like, I hope so. You bought her a house. You gave her the kids. Like, yeah. It's expensive. Millennials will do it because you have a Target card. You know? Like, <laughs> like, Nick, how can you date a millennial? What do you have in common with them? I'm like, absolutely nothing. That's why I bought the Harry Potter Blu-ray box set. <laughs> the research. If I'm on a date, Someone who's like 25 and there's a lull in the conversation, I just shout out, Snape, Dumbledore, I'm going to do butt stuff, you know? Like, <laughs> how do you meet millennial chicks, Nick? How, you know, they look so young. I was like, easy. I asked them a couple questions. So when you were growing up, did you have Little Mermaid on Blu-ray or DVD? If they say Blu-ray, way too fucking young. I'm running out of the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of the arcade. <laughs> if they say DVD, that's a sweet spot. I'm in, you know? Just like my two favorite Weezer albums, she was born in the 90s, you know? Like, that's perfect. <laughs> and if, I, if they say, oh, Little Mermaid, I had that one on VHS, and I'm like, you're a cougar. <laughs> Not interested, I'd like to get some hamsters in my cage. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fell in love with a millennial. Last summer, it was amazing. She, we're cuddling one night, and she told me, she's like, my butt. <sighs> uh, hi. My mouth? And she was like, my butt, your mouth. I love you. <laughs> I will. <coughs> but when I'm done on that nightstand, you better leave me a fucking Tide Pod. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep it minty fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really yeah, so that, I feel really bad I missed most of that. That's yeah, that's my boy Nick Lavalle. He's uh, he's got the channel called The Other Dude. He has a website too where he's got most of his shit. But uh yeah, the the YouTube channel will be linked in the description um here or well wherever you're watching this. Um but yeah, he, he does a mix of like he puts clips of his stand up up. He, he gives himself like random ass uh um random ass skits. It was a good one. And may, maybe it's a New England thing, but in the midst of a blizzard, he just walks out after snow blowing his driveway and he said he just did a Sears commercial for uh, Craftsman Snowblowers. Like, oh, yeah, no, so I got that fucking Sears card. Fucking, you know, he's, uh, last winter I bought the fucking thing, and like I didn't get much fucking use out of it because it's fucking, I mean, the fucking lame-ass fucking winner. But, uh, yeah, no, I fucking love <laughs> Sears. Fucking Sears. Sears. <laughs> yeah, that's good shit. So, I mean, go check out his channel. Tell him Saint sent you, and um, then convince his ass to get on here. I like I, I I like that his his dad bod is like on par with my dad bod right now. I'm kind of feeling oh yeah. That. And he, I'm totally oh and he's shameless. That. Yeah. Oh he's he's fucking shameless. Guy had a bit he used to be like Uncle Daddy. It's like I love him growing up in a generation where like you know most of our dads are just kind of like uncles because we don't know what dads are. Yeah. So they just kind of come over like once twice a month and like hey it's Uncle Daddy hey. So yeah, uh, I I am seeing in the chat. Uh, quite a pe quite a few people uh, theorizing that when I jumped up and and ran outside just now that I went to go vomit. Uh, I I would like to dispel all rumors. Almost, <laughs> 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 but no, but I I did not actually vomit. 
But I almost you will, did. You will not win this round, Internet. <clears throat> I almost did. I actually kind of wish that I did because uh, you kind when you take something like a death shot, when you take a very high octane uh, alcohol inside of your body, <laughs> you have to make that decision of are you going to throw up and it's going to burn like fire or are you going to keep it in your body and then it's going to burn like fire when it comes out your asshole the next day. So uh, uh, pinkies up and press F to pay respects to my asshole tomorrow. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Spicy. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You're going to have to pour like half a bottle of sriracha in that shit just to tame it out a bit. You see what I, you see how I suffer for this show, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, I don't. Um, but, you know, it's a good it's a good I guess it's a good way to balance the, the treasury. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. I mean, I some of it. Like we have, we have this gimmick in side quests where we all have health bars. Yep. Like old, like, like old, like Dungeons and Dragons games or whatever, you know. And the picture changes every time we take a hit, and basically, <laughs> the audience can literally like take health points away if their insults are good enough. If they make us laugh, if the joke is good enough, yep. we will take health points away until we die. Um, and so it's it's really fun and interactive, and we get to die on screen. So, you know, a lot of people enjoy it when Magog's like, "Yeah, fuck," yeah, you know. That's the best, dude. It's the best. Like, like viewer viewer interaction with the stream. Like, uh, it's 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 next level kind of streaming. It's amazing entertainment. It's a great fucking idea. I, I love yeah, it. I, I can't wait to see the new format. Thank, you. but I appreciate you. Thank, thanks, thanks for watching. I didn't even know you've seen side quest. Are you fucking for real, dude? I've seen every single side quest. <laughs> really? Yes, Fuck, really. Man. I've watched. Well, every I'm sorry, I didn't one. see you in the chat because I'm blind during the show, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I I lurk. I, no, 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 no. This is this is this is the absolute truth, dude. I lurk all the fucking time. I I, I don't I don't catch every single uh, Lord of the Night, the one with uh, Scribe Light, Ranty Monkey, and Satsu Two Cents, but I see most of them, and I just lurk. But I listen to their show. Uh, when side quest was like a, a really super frequent thing, I watched every single fucking side quest. Like I watch people's streams. I can my life is consuming fucking YouTube and researching pseudoscience to destroy. Like that's all I fucking do. So yeah, dude, I I've I'm, been a side I'm, quest I'm finally, fan for a long oh, time. I, I'm finally in that camp though, Jeff. Are you? Yeah, like now that school is over and I have finally quit all of my cleaning contracts. YouTube is my job now. Just make and sure, make sure. A really weird feeling. Just make sure you do that really good self care, though, man. When you get when you get deep with this shit, like it it, it starts to eat you alive after a while. It really does. It oh, I hear you, man. Nutty. But at the same time, I love this job. I get to work from home. I get to be my own boss. I get to do entertainment. Like I there entertain are... twenty six thousand fans. There are so many oh, much worse ways to make a living, and I think most of us have probably done most of them at this point. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't trade off. I mean, it's it's like anything else. Though. I mean, there's plenty of trade offs, but I mean, I'm I for one, I'm really fucking glad to hear that you know the Magog channel, the Magog brand, the Magog thing. It's it's now a, a firm and full time focus, and I'm pretty sure most of your fans and whatever new fans you pull out of this are going to as well. Yeah, and oh, I'm really, really glad that you guys watch SideQuest because you're going to love the new overlays. When we go off air, I'll show it to you, Jeff, but I don't want to show it on air because, one, we're, it we're already has some pictures of my new co-hosts, and I don't want anybody to know who they are until we go go live in June. Oh, yeah. So, now, is yeah. this now – I just want to double-check. These are the ones you that uh, you showed me after after stream. Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, they're good. Okay. But, oh, I, have, it's so but good. I, have, I have added to them, so – it's kind of exciting to show you guys some of the new death pictures for my my new co-hosts. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. uh, all right, real quick, Akito756. I know I'm late as fuck, but where can I get Magog's book? Uh, the Bacchus <laughs> Vine, right? By Keaton Floyd, yes. The Bacchus Vine by Keaton Floyd. Uh, that's that's Jeremy, a.k.a. Magog's book. Uh, and it's great. I, I really liked it. I liked it a lot. It's very lewd, though. It's a very adult book, just to let you know. Yes. Uh, well, I appreciate you reading it. I didn't even know you read it, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I I <laughs> I read it in various states of, of, of compromised uh, 
uh, cognizant awareness. Uh, <laughs> sometimes drunk, sometimes sober. Uh, it was it was an interesting experience to like get through for sure. Well, it uh, definitely is a it's a book about drug use in a way. So yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and anything that's like kind of like occultist behavior, uh, uh, blood rituals, shit like that. I, I love that kind of stuff. I'm a huge horror movie nerd, so it's it that's my bag. Uh, so and I, I'm really fascinated with like cults. So am I. So like am I. I wouldn't want to join one, but I'm fascinated by them. I'm really especially happy. like small town cults, you know. I'm really happy that my first foray into making a video about a cult actually led to an Ohio <laughs> State Attorney General investigation. <laughs> I'm pretty super stoked about that. That's pretty cool. I'll, uh, say, I'll say for my part, especially with this. I'll say for I'll say for my part, especially in this getup. I, I just look forward to leading one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look kind of like a cult leader for sure. Sredi so uh two bucks towards against. I'm not doing another fucking death shot. That's not fucking <laughs> happening. Uh, JSC Hong says thanks for your service, Jeremy. It's uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do anal. Is that really what you put in there? You said thanks for your service, Jeremy. I'm gonna do anal. <laughs> okay. Listen, listen. He went and God fought speak, to... sir. Yeah, he went and fought to protect your freedoms, and now you're going to use those freedoms to the best of somebody else's ability. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> oh, uh, that, that joke gave well, me listen, hemorrhoids. Yeah, yeah, not only that. I mean, yeah. listen. I mean, you know, if if Sharia, <laughs> you know, if Sharia manages to take over the planet, then the only people you're gonna get to do butt stuff with are small boys in makeup. <laughs> what so. the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <all right. laughs> huh? Okay. All right. <laughs> Mike, stuck in the middle of Noteville, says, gotta run, but it's been a blast, guys. Have a good one. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so, the format. She's a cruel mistress, but she demands obedience. And the format says, we have to move on to the cringe of the week. Well, the viral cringe of the, the viral week, yeah. We need a. I want you all to imagine a big epic graphic just flashing at you right now as we transition. To the part. See? Yep. Look, there we go. It's like a real show. It's like a real. It's like a real show. Cringe of yeah. the week. I'm just looking to give Jeff more work next week. That's all. Don't worry. <laughs> so, yeah. So this week's uh, this week's cringe. You probably all seen it. Uh, if you watched the Lesser Saints Discord, they spent a good amount of time talking about it. That's right. Uh, if you grew up in the '80s or the, even the '90s, uh, you, you might you might have remembered the the cartoon Thundercats as uh, an epic sort of part of your childhood, or maybe it was just an epic part of one of your friends' childhood. You didn't really get it, but. Um, whether you loved it or not back in the day, um, it, it takes a certain amount of fortitude not to cringe uh, to the point in which you swallow your own face uh, when seeing what has been done with this, this treasured vestibule of so many people's youths. That's right, they've decided to take Steven Universe uh, and smash it together with uh, basically what we can consider a Chinese knockoff of uh, of this show, and present us with uh, a flaming pile of horseshit which no one can stop talking about. Now, for this, I will say one of the things that I've seen that has been encouraging um, is that uh, it has inspired a conversation, at least on Twitter, in certain circles, about the value of actual art. Because if we compare the kind of art we see here, we also see it's in Steven Universe, Teen Titans Go, uh, The Amazing World of Gumball, pretty much any cheap cartoon outside of Adventure Time, because at least they went their own cheap way. But um, this discussion of art has actually led to some interesting conclusions, in at least as far as that... Um, well, we saw this kind of thing, I believe, during the 70s when animation got really good for a very brief period of time and then got really, really cheap right up until the 80s when they decided they needed to try again. And hopefully we'll see that happen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is shit. It is shit. It's unforgivable shit. <laughs> this, this... <laughs> God damn it. I, 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 that was a very flower way to, to explain that this is shit. This is terrible. This is actually abjectly fucking garbage. 
Cartoon Network. If you're looking for a PR agent, by the way, I am available on the weekends. Uh, it's just not fun. Th- this, this is this is mind-numbingly fucking terrible. It is actually now, objectively fucking terrible. Are we gonna run um, their little trailer, by the way? Uh, no, no. Oh yeah, because it's. I mean, the the sad thing is too is you look at this kind of graphic. Now, I'm a big fan of the show Adventure Time. I don't know if either of you guys watch it, but I'm a big fan of the show. And it as goofy and as fucking like you know basically like you know like cheap sketch animation as it is, um, it's well written. It's funny in its own way, and it's got its own plot and lore. This thing though, they've taken an established canon, which has been not only done but then redone brilliantly in 2011, um, and taken something that is honestly like a serious fucking epic fantasy hero show, and turned it into like the dumbest, dumbest fucking thing they could possibly imagine. And of course, uh, a, a top-notch soy boy seems to be kind of responsible. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't agree with any of that. I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm sitting there going, "Okay, the lines are crisp, the colors great." I mean, okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm 36. Oh, uh, I'm 36. Nick, you're 35. Uh, uh, Jeremy, how old are you? And we're talking about cartoons. I am, I am 33 next month. 33. But but you remember Thundercats, right? Oh, yeah. 80s, okay. man. I was, okay. I was a kid in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so here's here's the big thing that, that I, I really feel like we should point out, though. And this is really important. I bef- Before I get on to how, how terrible this is, uh, we, we kind of have to kill our nostalgia a little bit. Uh, when was the last time that you guys actually watched the old Thundercats? When it wasn't dubbed by somebody on YouTube? It's been a while because I was more of a fan of, like, Turtles and Mm -hmm. and fucking, like, that was all good animation. Well, actually, no. No, Gargoyles was fucking awesome. Well, Gargoyles was great, but actually you bring up an interesting point because, like, look at what the modern reiterations of the Ninja Turtles have been over time. (laughs) It It didn't fare much better, did it? I did watch Transformers and and he you know He Man, so Thundercats wasn't as big for me. Mm-hmm. So it has been a long time since I've watched the original Thundercats, but I definitely remember the animation being better than this fucking garbage heap. And not, well, not only the animation, but, but I mean the thing is, is when you take the average cartoon that is drawn like this, right? And I and I'm saying this also as a fan of the Amazing World of Gumball, but that is that show has the most weird subversive fucking writing. I mean, you've got a, you've got a mainstream kids show where they actually have a whole episode where they're making fun of quote, social justice warriors. <laughs> I mean, there was a line and it. it's like, Oh man. Yeah. He keeps asking questions. I keep getting a headache every time I try to think about that one. He asked about if there's nothing faster than the light, how did the dark get there first? I mean, that's <laughs> right. That's good writing. But that show is different. When you take an established thing that's supposed to be this epic hero show and you make it a bumbling series of what look like, you know, pre-adolescent moron, uh, car- you know, chubby cartoons. Yeah, you know, you could say you got to drop the nostalgia and shit like that. But it's like there's an honest there's an honest criticism to be made about, OK, if you think that your art style, which is not creative at all, is 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 worthwhile and you know how to run a show why don't you just make a good show like all of the other shows that have done this have done i'm not even a steven universe fan but the existence of a fandom which ranges from the ages of 12 to fucking 40 says that at least that original concept and lore did something this is a cheap attempt by what as i joked in the ticker line um you know sort of failure uh college sophomore art students who are using ms paint and a trackpad uh decided yeah. like, hey i can make a show it's not that easy guys we make uh, a show We're as so, cartoony as fuck so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna ruin everybody's childhoods real quick uh, so I'm, I'm going to play something on the my circle, but I'm going to be muting it. So I suggest you guys mute it too, because we're just we're just going to talk over. It. We're only looking at, at the art style. Right I can't now. do that. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm I'm going to ruin your childhoods real quick. So we we remember like when you <laughs> my think parents about, already did that. <laughs> but before before we do this, like remember what you remember Thundercats being. Now now watch this. This this is the opening of Thundercats. Okay. Uh, I'll skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> this this is the opening of Thundercats. That crisp fucking animation, the 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 very very poignant, like defined, amazing, 
great fucking characters. They look fucking awesome, right? This looks incredible. This is what we remember. That's not what the fucking cartoon looked like. You know what the cartoon looked like? Check this shit out. The cartoon was was cheap anime, which is why cookie cutter, crap ass, barely disjointed, shitty fucking like glitchy fucking shit. It was nowhere near as well animated as the actual intro was. Never was. No, I remember this too. And you know what's funny is because I mean, I still enjoy anime and um, this that that's what it is. That's that's what it fucking is. But you got to understand, too. There is a difference in time here. True. You know, True. they had to pump these things out very quickly. And it was the 80s. Like, hello. <laughs> like they, they, you know, things are a little different now. You know, uh, there's a little bit more pride in animation oh. since about the mid 90s. You go back to like X-Men, the Batman animated series. People were more dedicated to animation than in the 80s. Well, they actually, and they also had to right. actually draw and animate. I mean, the way these modern shows with these, you know, the bubble head effect that we have with the new Thundercats and that we have with all the other shows. I mean, if you, if you watch any behind the scenes <laughs> of how those things are done, they're drawn. I mean, the animation, it's all done on basically giant, you know, art tablets where they, they draw the shit digitally and then they just put their points in and then they animate it from there. And I'm not saying that it's not an e- that it's an easy process. I know it's not. But to compare, but to try and say that there's any comparison to be made between this, what is basically, uh, you know, effectively cheap, um, you know, Americanized anime in effect, ver- to compared to the kind of uh, of, of um, Steven Universe schlock we're getting fed now. Oh no no uh, no! Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Me me destroying the conceptions of thinking that Thundercast is like the most amazing. Uh, beautiful art style. No, like, it's just great, and people G. put effort into it. G.I. Joe, Transformers, Generation 1, all of them, their animation was shit. It was terrible. But that isn't to say that it's better than this. Yeah, This is actually objectively worse. This is crap. They had an, they had an excuse in the 80s, at least. Like, they had a new toy line coming out, had to get the fucking cartoons. Because back in those days, yeah. a lot of times, the toys were created first. Yep. And then once they became popular amongst kids, they created shows and lunch boxes and all kinds of stuff off yep. of them. That's how He-Man got it started. It was originally just a, uh, let's and, do a toy for boys. And you'd you know? always, G.I. Joe too, I think. And you'd always notice too. And yes, I, let, me ask, let me ask if you guys remember this too. Anytime they'd actually make a movie of an established cartoon that we knew, it was almost a little unnerving because the animation was that much better. And so you'd go in and you'd be like, wow, they move around a lot more. <laughs> You know? all, all I'm saying is that these fucking idiots could have learned something from the great animation from Bible Black. I'm just, just <laughs> It needs more penises. <laughs> it needs more yes. chicks. Yes. Magic. Oh, actually, here, here's a fun thing, though. And it was cut. It we was need kind more of related. pentagrams and dripping dicks and thundercats. Well, it was. Well, this is this is kind of related, though, uh, yeah. to like the point I made at the opener. When you think about this, to think that we went from you know this Thundercats, right? Uh, this you know this this choppy sort of still frame animation with like two moving things, um, yeah. to things like Aeon Flux when that was out on liquid television. Cause that was the thing. And I had a, I had a, I had a, like somebody who's like steeped in animation, uh, uh, even point that out. Just like, like I'd said before, you get these periods in which like you get these lazy shit bag hack artists who are just like, Hey, I can pop out a show for your network. Would you like that? And we go through that and people kind of get used to it. And then as soon as somebody shows up on the scene with some actual like artistic work, Everyone who was watching just sits up and takes notes like, whoa, I didn't know cartoons could be like that. Wow. Well, you even go back to the 80s, like some things, especially from Japan, they had a lot more love for animation. It wasn't just commercialism to promote the toys. Like you go back and watch like Akira. Like that was a fucking movie of brilliance. It was mind blowing when you were young, right? That was fucking epic. The fucking animation was so smooth in that fucking movie, you know? Fucking hell. And even anime's kind of taken a dip. Like, I've seen some more modern anime, and a lot of it's, like, mixed with, like, let's just throw in the 3D battles. Like, let's just make, like, use 3D animation because it's easier to do in a computer. Yeah, It just sure. doesn't look right. It's that blend of, like, 3D and 
and and hand drawn anime is kind of even, shit. Even, yeah, even when it even when it's done with like some attempt at grace, like you know the 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 Attack on Titan, I don't you know that yeah, one. Yeah. Attack on Titan, like when it's when when it hits those three D sequences, it's supposed to look like epic and sprawling and really well done. But you can't help but notice what it is. It's like it, what you, you did a you could tell they did a good job, but it's still like kind of obvious. Right. But I suppose I mean if, I suppose if nothing else though, maybe you know because this show, well, I mean maybe it'll take off with the kids. Who knows? Thundercats, I can live with it not you know being the thing it was. It'll always be what it was. But yeah, I, I honestly I guess, don't really give that much of a shit. No. Well, I know. I mean, maybe we can end this on a high note by saying, like, hopefully this very, very obvious turn, which people have been pointing out forever of just copy paste animation that people are doing with the same face shapes and the same animation styles. Maybe this obvious hackish attempt to really just uh, tap into nostalgia that it will absolutely fail to tap into will actually maybe spur and inspire um, real art to come our way down the line. Yeah, maybe. I mean, and at the very least, they're not doing it to Silverhawks, right? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I like. Silver what was Hawks. the one? What, what was the one underwater? Uh, blah, the Snorks. Let's just say Sea Lab. No, I, don't, I don't think so. But I, you know, I, I have, I have kind of noticed something. Like a couple of people were posting in the chat about like Macross or Protect that sort of thing. I think like one of the one of the demarcations of an older cartoon because they didn't have the tools that we have now to be able to to maximize the production level make sure their animation was really really good they had to like meet deadlines they this is like a every week you got to get a new fucking episode out and this is the old style of animation so like old school macross and robotech your your ronma one half even to to more recent ones like inuyasha for the anime uh the the ninja turtles from the 90s and shit like that all of them their animation is shit it's terrible it's fucking terrible but like another person pointed out in the chat though the reason why these shows actually ended up working out really well the writing was actually really good yeah. really good that's why we remember thundercats or we remember gi joe and transformers why nobody gives a shit about what was it sewer sharks <laughs> right or uh robo or, or, or no sharks, no uh, cyber cops street fucking... sharks street sharks street sharks yeah, yeah street sharks and a fucking attack of the killer tomatoes yeah oh. uh bucky o'hare nobody gave a shit about bucky o'hare crap right See, that's amazing well, you know, it, it's that, then that's the funny thing. We kind of get something like, we get an example. You say Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. We get an example of that kind of with this Thundercats thing because they're trying to tap into some kind of nostalgia. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes was based on one of the campiest movies ever made, which it's happened to feature George Clooney before George Clooney was even really George Clooney. And it, they still, Fox Saturday morning, they're like, yeah, what? fuck it. Yeah, we green light everything. Yeah. That's because they made great toys. They Oh, <laughs> dude. I love those fucking toys. The attack and killer tomatoes, man. I had all the fucking toys. The tomatoes that eat people. I was like, fuck oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. But the, <laughs> the, the RoboCop cartoon, man, I was obsessed with the RoboCop cartoon. That was pretty good. It was pretty was good. good. It's because I snuck down one night when my dad was watching RoboCop, and I was like super fucking young, and I watched it like hiding behind his recliner. He had no idea that I watched the movie. But I'm like <laughs> super young, just watching RoboCop. It was awesome. I had nightmares for like two weeks. Speaking of... Speaking of futuristic dystopia, though, I have one quick announcement before we end this, because yeah. um, I'm sure we're getting towards the time. Oh, but... we're, we're almost mm -hmm. done. We're almost done. Yeah. Um, not only was like Altered Carbon fucking awesome on Netflix. It was good. Netflix. Netflix is launching the Netflix series Mega City One, and they're in talks with Carl Urban to play Dread. Get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? I... What? Not joking. It could very well end up being a sequel to Dread, which was oh, like okay. amazing. And, okay, okay. We need <laughs> no, no, no. We need a call to action here because people are always saying you can talk all the shit you oh. want, but unless you get make some activism, so everybody watching right now, you tweet the fuck out of Netflix telling them that you want this shit. because yeah, I want they, this shit. So go, all, personal they, army. They have already they have already greenlit Mega City One as a show, but they haven't gotten Carl Urban yet. But well, Carl okay, Urban well then, has harass, not said no. Harass he Carl Urban. Uh, Car Harass him. <laughs> ever ever since Carl Urban played Dread in the movie Dread, which is an, a fucking incredible movie. If you haven't seen Dread, go and fucking find it and watch yeah. it. 
ever it's since nothing then, like Stallone's bullshit. No, no, no. It's it's like true Judge Dredd. Uh, he has been on record saying over and over again, like, and, and he'll make videos for the fans who are like, we need more Dredd. And he sends videos to them encouraging him, like, I want to do Dredd more. Let's do this. Yeah. I'm into it. Fuck, dude, that would be the best thing ever. I'm such a huge Judge Dredd fan. But I, See, I on, no matter who they get, I hope they get somebody good if they can't get Carl. But I can tell you this, a Netflix mature rated show, Mega City One. Oh, oh yeah. Um, oh. I will I will get I fuck, I will I will I will kick down as many doors as it takes just to audition <laughs> Every, for a walk on yeah. part. God damn. Mm. Like I love that comic book and like that little kid inside of me when it when Carl Urban was like making a the speech on the loudspeaker, he hacked in the loudspeaker, it was like, Mama's not the law. I am the law. I was yeah. like, eh. Yes! <laughs> there's, yes! Look at that. All right, you know, I think there's um, there's, you, we... there's there's one panel in comic books that I've carried with me forever because I still have I still have old old Judge Dredd comic books right now in a in a fucking box like right over there. Uh, there's an old old school Judge Dredd comic book where he's fighting uh, Judge Death and the other like Supernatural. You know what I'm talking about, Magog, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there there's like four uh, evil judges. There's Judge Death. Uh, uh, judge like fire or some shit one of them is called judge fear and it's this crazy supernatural entity with this like this uh gate for a helmet and when he opens the gate uh normal people die from fright they they look at his true face and they they wither and immediately die from fear uh the most badass moment in comics was a judge dread comic where judge fear has like tackled judge dread opens his gate says gaze into the face of fear and judge dread says gaze into the fist of dread and punches his goddamn fist through his goddamn head perfect <laughs> Mwah! Uh, nerd boater i will <laughs> say uh jeff real quick do we have anything any more um any anything else to get through oh on yeah that side? Shit, shit okay yeah sorry i should probably check that out gonzo says well, that was... gonzo says i didn't read his super chat uh-oh uh oh. I'm looking, man. Uh let's see. Okay. Mike's I was gonna stuck. Uh, that kind of news is the best <laughs> high end like again, a happy ending to any show. I'd I know. Say. Spectacular Wanderer says, I'm old, I watched the original show. This hurts for the uh the Thundercats. I know, man. Tyler Hill, did you get around to Megalo Box Nick? If not, do it. What does that mean? Sounds like an anime. I'll have to check it out. Megalobox? Yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, oh, and Gonzo Duke says, Magog, you look like an Andy. Uh, Andy Persky? I, I, I think he just, uh, when when people were like, you don't look like a oh, 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 people are guessing my name. I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I was so, like, I don't look anything like Andy Worth, dude. I did mix get a Gonzo. People mix up with Kirk all the time for some reason. <laughs> really? Why? Yeah, yeah, I get comments all the fucking time on my videos. They're like, "Is that TJ in a hood?" <laughs> you don't look anything like fucking TJ. Jesus Christ, people are dumb. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been your YouTube Saints for Sunday Saints in Exile on my channel rather than the regular channel. Uh, we'll be <laughs> uploading it right away. Uh, check us out Thursday on Twitch for Midweek Saints, and otherwise every single Sunday. Without fail, 7.30 Pacific Standard Time, 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. We will always be here every fucking Sunday. Our guest has been Magaga Morskar, a.k.a. Jeremy. Stay saucy and um, look forward to you, Dread. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. That was great. Sweet. Always good, dude. Good night, everybody. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Go get, get, get fucked. Get fucked.